rated the number one team in all of Canada against Saskatoon, coached by Marcel Como. The starting center for Saskatoon is Kevin Kaminsky, and the puck comes right back to Darren Kruger. Kruger, a pass to Blake Knox. There's Knox, number 15, getting it in front, and Sheldon Kennedy had trouble controlling the puck. Jason Christie trying to get it for Saskatoon. It goes back to Ken Sutton. Feeds it along the boards. Number 14 is Brian Garrett. He gets it to center, and it slides into the swift current zone. Bob Wilson. Good hit in the corner as the puck comes out to center. Here's a chance now. Kazowski a shot. And that's off defenseman Colin Bauer. And our first save of the game, Mike Greenlay. Jordan, you can see right off the top, Saskatoon's going to try to take a very physical approach to this game, and that's their game. They're a hitting team, a four-checking team, and uh, Swift Current's more of a speed finesse team, so the contrast and styles in that first shift were pretty clearly evident. And what a story, Saskatchewan Place. A beautiful building opened February 1988, the home of the Saskatoon Blades. They attracted some 230,000 fans this season and all-time records for the Memorial Cup this week. Swift Current, Dan Lambert, number three, bringing it in, deflected just wide. Loose puck in front, and it slapped out the center. Dan Lambert inside his own line now for Swift Current, a pass up the middle to Sim, out of reach for him, and going back for it is Jody Prasnick. Prasnick right onto the stick of Daniels, trying to get it in front. And it comes out, here's Saskatoon, Coacher. Coacher moving up with Katelnikov, and he's taken out of the play, and goaltender Kruger fires it around the board. This is Soberlack. Soberlack trying to move right in, and that stops. Another shot, and Greenlay stops that as Trevor Sim let it go. Saskatoon's Coacher up to the line. Coming in now with Scott Sissons, and he's taken out of the play by Daniel. They jam the puck in the swift current zone, and what an exciting tempo to the Memorial Cup Championship. Marcel Como, the head coach of Saskatoon. He's a, he's a marvelous coach. He's done a very good job with this team. I think he's well prepared to talk to him before the game, Bernie, and he's really got a good handle on the opposition. He's got a good game plan in place. They want to forecheck and score off the forecheck today. They want to make sure swift current doesn't get too many of those numerical advantages in that neutral zone, and I think he's got his team very, very well prepared for today's game. Back to the action, number 20 is Jason Smart and Swift Current Broncos get possession quickly, and it's fired in by Mark McFarland. Goaltender Greenlay plays it along the board, but the Swift Current Broncos right on top of it. Here's Bauer trying to come up with the puck, and it goes to Lalashur. Off the skate, it comes to center, and back to Darren Kruger. Play a little scrambly at the center ice zone as they set up Bauer. It's deflected right onto the stick of McFarland, and he shoots it in. Colin Bauer, a draft pick of the Edmonton Oilers, number 10. In his own zone, finds an opening, shoots it down the ice. Doesn't go far enough for icing, and Bob Wilkie for Swift Current. Feeds it over. Dan Lambert, an exciting player for Swift Current. Brings it in, Soberlack right in front, and it sailed wide. Here's Kaminsky. Taken out of the play, and it's led out by Poline. Poline moving right in. He's tripped up. There will be a penalty coming up. A tripping infraction, and we'll go on the power play when we return. An exciting opening to the 1989 Memorial Cup. A tripping penalty to Swift Current's Kevin Kanoff. The good attack, he's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good shot here. He got a, a step on him and throws to the net very well. And uh, Kevin was forced to, to haul him down. And now they've got the power play. Swift Current's got a pretty aggressive penalty killing crew, Bernie. They don't sit back and wait. So Corey Coaster will take the face off in the Swift Current zone. He gets it back to Sutton, setting up a shot. And that's blocked by Kazowski. And it's taken by Sheldon Kennedy. Here's Kennedy in for Swift Current, taken out of the play by Sutton. The play setting up on the power play off the skate of Kaminsky. It's shot inside the line and backhanded by Darren Kruger down the ice. Ken Sutton 
who has three goals in the Memorial Cup Championship, setting up for the Saskatoon Blades. A pass to Coaster on the right side, out of brief, and it's broken up by Kruger, and he catches teammate Soberlack offside inside the blue line. Bernie, sometimes as a coach, you don't like getting power plays too early in the game because the guys are so excited, they're so emotional, the crowd here is in the Chicago Stadium, they're just noise is relentless. The Blades don't look very relaxed right now, and I'm sure he wants them to settle down and make this power play work. Well, the crowd for the week will be in the 76,000 neighborhood. What an outstanding job the organizers and the Western Hockey League have done here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Swift current, a man short, can up in the penalty box as 112, remaining in his minor penalty. We're still scoreless. As the Blades bring it up. This is Coaster. You'll see him a lot this afternoon. Coaster right in front. Backhand shot is knocked down and slapped out to center. Colin Bauer, third round pick in 88 by the Edmonton Oilers. Gets a pass over to Holine. Holine to Coaster. Coaster knocked against the boards there. Trying to pick it up is Daniels out of reach. Bauer gets a shot, a backhand drive. And goaltender Kruger stops that. Greenlay. Out of the net, ahead to Holine. Holine bumped as he got to the blue line, and it's offside at the Swift Current blue line. Bernie, it's interesting that uh, Marcel Como this morning at our meeting discussed Coaster and how important he is to his team because he's their most skilled forward. And on the power play, you can really see his skills are very, very good. Marcel's got him on the power play a lot. He's a big, strong player, and he's a Detroit uh, Red Wing draft and certainly a good player. And he's a cousin of Detroit Red Wings, Joey Coaster. 33 seconds remaining in the power play. Soberlak tries to play the puck. It slides into the corner. After it, there goes Brian Garrett. He played in another Memorial Cup as a member of the Portland Winterhawks. Garrett's is number 14 for Saskatoon. The Blades in their own zone, having a little trouble getting organized. Some good penalty killing by the Swift Current Broncos. Soberlak in there pinching along the boards with Ken Sutton. Sutton will try the other side now. Kaminsky. Lead pass too far for Jason Christie. And goaltender Trevor Kruger feeds it around the board. Kaminsky tries to keep it in. It's slapped out to center ice. Here's a chance now for Kevin Knopf. Knopf, number four, taken out of the play by Sean Snezer, number four of Saskatoon. Both teams back at full strength as they jam along the boards. Inside the Saskatoon zone, the Swift Current Broncos in blue and green. The Saskatoon Blades in white with yellow and blue trim. Sutton slaps it along to Kevin Kaminsky. Here's Kaminsky, sidestep Kozowski. The pass to Yellow Waga. Yellow Waga shot. And that was a hard drive, but off the target. Colin Bauer tries to keep it in. It's up now to Kennedy. Kennedy moving in with Kozowski. Still has the puck at center, checked by Garrett, but clears the puck into the Saskatoon zone. Bauer behind his net for the Saskatoon Blades. Knox, number 15, in for checking for Swift Current. It comes back to the line here. Quilkey having trouble. Jason Smart is taken out of the play by goaltender Kruger. Now Swift Current's Kozowski got to center. It's bent over on the left side off the stick of Blake Knox. The Blades setting up. Bauer gets it over. Return pass and slaps it right to the Swift Current blue line to Lambert. Lambert to Trevor Sim. Sim had it slapped off his stick and Lambert deep in his own zone for the Swift Current Broncos. Coaster after him. Tremendous tempo here, Bernie. He was, uh, this has gone over a minute now without a whistle, and you just wonder the Swift Current can sustain this kind of tempo. The comments of Dave King here at the Memorial Cup Championship. Here's Kimby Daniels moving right in, and back to deflect the puck was Coaster. He brings it out for Saskatoon. Coaster got to the Swift Current line. Soberlack stopped that. Darwin McPherson, number 27, for Saskatoon. A good hit at center ice. Here's a chance now, Cattell Nakov, and he tried to get it in front to Scott Sisson. End to end action. What a great finale of the Canadian Major Junior Championship. Here's Knopf. Oh, and a 
top goaltender Greenlay and just missed the open side. Another shot deflected high and wide. Dan Lambert takes a hit. Here's Simpson. What action. The crowd enjoying this. We're only in the opening period, and there's a penalty coming up. A charging infraction with 12 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the opening period. The native of Brandon, Manitoba, Kimby Daniels in the penalty box, Dave, for cross-checking. Yeah, it's a penalty burning in the offensive zone, too, which really is never very good. Most uh, coaches don't like to take penalties in that uh, zone, and uh, he left his feet. It was a good call. Now, whole line for Saskatoon. It's knocked off his stick, and deep goes Ken Sutton, setting up behind his own net. A 19-year-old rookie who played Tier 2 in Calgary with the Canucks last year. Here's Coaster. The pass was behind him, but he's quick to retrieve it and gives it to Ken Sutton. Sutton, watched there by Tim Tisdale, forced deep into his own zone again. Swift Current with their second penalty of the opening period. Swift Current got through the first minor penalty, and they'll attempt to do the same here in the scoreless Memorial Cup championship game. But the Blades with Tracy Katelnikov, number 18, trying to come up with it. It's back to Ken Sutton. He can't keep it in at the line. Dean Holine, he slaps it ahead. Coaster, a first round pick of the Detroit Red Wings. Drops it back, Sutton a shot. That's off the target and is caught up in the mesh in behind goaltender Trevor Kruger. Corey Coaster, a first round pick in 88, 17th overall by Detroit. We're going to see him a lot on the power play. He's got great hands, and I, I watched him play a couple of times this year, and his puck control skills are great. His shot is excellent. And he's certainly going to be the key to this plate power play. So if current, though, doing a very good job. Their penalty killing is interesting for him. They change it up. They forecheck them aggressively the first part of this power play, and then the two forecheckers swung wide, took the lanes, and the defenseman tried to defend that blue line. So they change up how they forecheck against you, and you've got to be really on your toes. The other two teams in the Memorial Cup this week, the Laval Titans representing Quebec and the Peterborough Peets were eliminated in earlier competition. The semifinal last night, Swift Current beat Peterborough six to two to earn this berth in the final against Saskatoon. Sutton, now Colin Bauer slapped the puck, took a weird hop off the glass. Trevor Kruger, the goaltender, misjudged it a bit. Here's Sutton backhanding it. Checked by Peter Kozowski. Kozowski gives it to Bob Wilkie. Here's Wilkie for Swift Current, a shot. Club save by Greenlay. Well, that's the kind of goal thing that Mike Greenlay has given them all tournament. He's played very, very well. And he's really been the key to Saskatoon's success. He's an excellent goalkeeper. Here's the replay of Bob Wilkie. A good shot through traffic here. And Greenlay, an excellent glove save. He's out above the top of his crease. Cut the angle down very, very well. The Memorial Cup competition started in 1919, was presented in commemoration of the many great Canadian hockey players who paid the supreme sacrifice in defense of their country in the First World War. And has been one of the most coveted championships in hockey in North America. The Memorial Cup at stake, the Canadian Major Junior Hockey Championship Swift Current, Broncos, and Saskatoon, an all-Western final, and an all-Saskatchewan final at that. No score in the opening period, and we have 10 minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the opening period at Saskatchewan Place. We're back at Saskatchewan Place. Bernie Pascal with Dave King, Kevin Waugh, and our CTV sports crew. The Memorial Cup Championship, no score between Saskatoon and Swift Current Broncos. Bernie, it's very interesting. Every time the Blades shoot the puck in, and they shoot the puck in a lot, you've got to watch Kruger, their goaltender for Swift Current. He really gets out of the net. He likes to handle a puck a great deal, a little like Hextall. This is Darwin McPherson, number 27 of Saskatoon. A former New Westminster Bruin, a steadying influence defensively for Saskatoon, one of the toughest players in the Western Hockey League. This is Prasnick shooting the puck in. Prasnick, who played U.S. college 
with Colorado College in 87-88. He's number two for Saskatoon. They jam the puck in behind the swift current goal. Kruger, as Dave mentioned, comes out of the net there. Up on the side to Soberlack, and it's out of play. Soberlack's a fine player. He's a player who's a first-round pick of the Edmonton Oilers, a very skilled player. He's a player that Graham would like to see play more consistently because he is so skilled. And someone keeping a close eye on Soberlack is Barry Fraser of the Edmonton Oilers. Well, just his overall uh, uh, talent that he handles the puck real well, and he's a good fluid skater, and I think that's what, imp what impressed us the most. And, and the, the other part of his game is, is just development through experience. So the comments of Barry Fraser of the Edmonton Oilers, no score, the face-off to the left of Trevor Kruger. This is Bob Wilkie fighting in behind his own net for the puck, and it slides over to Darren Bader. Bader gives it to Drew Sautel, and Kruger makes a save there. Brian Sackett gets the puck out to center. It's shot right back in, Kruger out of the net. He does that frequently to play it. Leaves it there for Jeff Knight. Knight got it to the blue line, but not out. Kept in by Sautel. This is the Blake game, the forecheck hard and aggressively, and this is where they get a lot of their scoring chances off the forecheck. Now the Bronco, up to center ice. Here's a chance for McFarland. McFarland jamming towards the net, and it slides through the crease, and it goes over to Sautel. Sautel, a lead pass to Holine. Here's Holine, number seven, moving in with Sautel, and he's taken out of the play by Jeff Knight, a good defensive play by Knight. End to end. Here comes Tinsdale moving for the front of the net, and the shot hit a skate and goes wide. They jam for it along the boards, and then it comes out to number 21, Jason Christie. Here's Christie moving in with Bauer, heading for the net. It's Garrett, and he's taken out of the play. Garrett, number 14, is checked. They slap it off the boards, and Brian Sackick lifts it up over the glass. And out of play, an exciting and enthusiastic crowd here at Saskatchewan Place. Swift Current and Saskatoon remain scoreless. Well, the Saskatchewan hockey flavor, you can hear it now. This crowd, a capacity crowd at Saskatchewan Place, enjoying this game at scoreless in the opening period. Saskatoon Blades in white against the Swift Current Broncos, and they're on the attack now with Kevin Knopf moving in with Knox. Tried to get the pass over to Peter Kozowski, and that was knocked down. This is Sheldon Kennedy at center. Kennedy is checked by Garrett. Garrett's in turn is jammed right in front of the Swift Current bench. The Broncos and the Saskatoon Blades in the 1989 Memorial Cup. The key to any team's success, Dave, goaltending, and both have been very sharp in the early going. Ah, no question about it. These, uh, in a short tournament like this, Bernie, goalkeeping always plays a large role, and we had the pleasure of coaching Sean Burton, seeing him do uh, many amazing things in tournament play, and Greenlee's a big, strong kid and blocks a lot of the nets. Kruger's smaller, more agile, and there's a contrast to the way they play the game. Sean Snezer with a lead pass for Christie. A delayed offside, the puck is slapped out to center. This is Ken Sutton, number three, for the Saskatoon Blades. Got it ahead, it's intercepted by Blake Knox. Knox, number 15 of Swift Current. He was taken out of the play by David Struth, number nine. Now Sutton, good hit as Sean Snezer is jarred right at center right as he was bumped by Sheldon Kennedy. Bernie, this is one of the matchups that uh, Marcel wants. He wants Garrett's line up against Kennedy's line, and he's got his matchup so far in the game. He's been able to get these guys out against each other every time. This is Jody Prasnick for Saskatoon. Gets the pass up to Coaster, moving in, drops it right in front. Shrews, a backhand shot. What a save of Prasnick by Trevor Kruger. Rooney Trevor didn't control the rebound. The, the shot wasn't a great shot, but the rebound got away on him, and he was forced to make a heck of a save coming across the net. And again, we talked about his agility, and you'll see on the replay that the save here, he, he loses the rebound, and there's agility right there. He gets across the net. An unbelievable save. And as we talked about earlier, Bernie, the goalkeeping is always so important. Trevor Kruger, 20 years of age, 5'8", 155 pounds, 
a mainstay for the Swift Current Broncos in the Western Hockey League, the number one ranked team in all of Canada. Here's a lead pass now for Peter Soberlack, moving in a shot. And the backhand drive just sailed wide. Soberlack, number 16, gets it in front. Another shot, rebound, and Greenway lost it, but it went wide. Bernie, I would say that uh, Soberlack's little display there just basically you know, reinforces what Terry Fraser said. Fluid skater, good puck handler, sees the ice well. There's a chance now for Sissons, number 19. Coaster after the puck. Coaster drops it back to Lala Shure. A shot, ooh, and that was a high whistling drive that went high up into the crowd. Scott Sisson, a 30-goal scorer this year for Saskatoon. If you believe in genetics, Bernie, this is the guy who's got it. His dad, uh, Jim Sisson, is a great golfer, one of the best in the province of Saskatchewan, also a great hockey player. His mother was a track star in high school, so genetically he's got what it takes to be a hockey player. We talked to him about his pre-game meal, and he said, well, this game is early, but he said, I love my mom's homemade macaroni. And that's <laughs> quite a boost for home cooking. And speaking of mom's, tomorrow is Mother's Day, and uh, happy Mother's Day early to all of the mothers across Canada watching the game today. Yellow Wagon, number 11, gets it ahead to Jason Smart. He fires the puck in. Kruger can't trap it there. Luke Puck in front. And it goes over to Dan Lambert, up over the glass, and out of play. An exciting Memorial Cup championship, the Swift Current Broncos and Saskatoon Blades. Five minutes and 38 seconds remain to be played here in the opening period at Saskatchewan Place. Two penalties in the game, both the Swift Current, and they killed off both successfully, and here comes penalty Number three, a charging call to Dean Holine. So Swift Saskatoon goes into the penalty box. When we return, Swift Current will go on the power play. Holine's in the penalty box, Dave, and you look at power plays. Swift Current, 180 power play goals as the result of this penalty. They get another power play attempt in the Memorial Cup. This, this, is, this penalty was very much like the penalty Swift Current took in the offensive zone, not the kind you need to take. And Swift Current's power play, 35% uh, this year. That's unbelievably high, Bernie. And that's uh, been a big part of their team this year has been their power play. Lambert falls as he goes back to retrieve the puck, but quick to get to his feet. No score. A power play opportunity for the Broncos. It comes ahead now to Sheldon Kennedy. Here's Soberlock, Sackick in front. Here's an opportunity now, and swinging around is Bob Wilkie. As Bauer took him out of the play. Wilkie after the game, but Bauer slaps it into the corner. Here's a chance for Tisdale. Tisdale gets it back to Kennedy in front, and it's broken up and lifted out by Darwin McPherson. Soberlack or Wilkie, number 24. He gets it to Dan Lambert. Back to Wilkie. There's a chance now over the line is Kennedy trying to set up Brian Sackick. It's over to Kennedy and Lambert is checked. There's a chance now for Christie and he's hauled down by Sheldon Kennedy and there'll be a high sticking penalty coming up to Swift Currents Kennedy. Well, he had to do that or Christie was home free. Tony, good pressure here by the Blades. They uh, have got Swift Current up close to the blue line. They put the pressure on and turned it over, and uh, an extra play by Christie here to get away. And the Blades, I thought, in that penalty coin situation, they were reading very well. Swift Current got the puck up top in the zone, got kind of close to the blue line and kind of cornered themselves. And the Blades jumped and played very aggressively and prodded the closed options. and. I think that uh, certainly that's good penalty killing. Coach Graham James behind the Swift Current Broncos bench is third year as coach of Swift Current. And he watches Sheldon Kennedy head to the penalty box. Whole line has 55 seconds remaining in his penalty for Saskatoon. Bernie, one interesting part of this game is in talking with uh, 
Graham before the game, he mentioned his team was, the center men were not great on face-offs. They have really dominated face-offs in the first period. I would say they're over 80% against the Blades in terms of face-offs. Now the Blades. Coaster at his own blue line is bumped by Darren Kruger. It's taken by Daniels. Daniels lost the puck before he could get a shot. Here comes Coaster. Up for Saskatoon. In with Sizzle. Bumped against the board by Kevin Knopf. Still digging after the puck. Gets it back. The shot right on. A stop by Kruger. Once Not again, Bernie, some excellent skill by uh, Coaster. Boy, can he ever handle a puck? Does he ever see the ice? Amazing. Now the Broncos. Saskatoon will have a power play in four seconds as that puck is brought in by Bauer offside at the Swift Current Blue Line. And what a history the Memorial Cup Championship has. Marcel Como is fifth year as coach of Saskatoon. He played at the Memorial Cup in 1972 as a member of the Edmonton Oil Kings. I think Marcel Como is just a typifies the quality of coaching that's taking place right now in Major Junior Hockey. There's a lot of great young coaches really working at their game, and these two teams here are very well coached. You can see a lot of tendencies, a lot of things done very well, and uh, they're well coached teams. As a member of the Edmonton Royal Kings in 72, they didn't win the Memorial Cup that year in Ottawa. It was won by Cornwall, and Como was telling us that his main recollection about that was Richard Brodeur, the goaltender for Cornwall in 72, he said, was simply outstanding in that tournament. Now the Saskatoon Blades on the power play. Bauer back, hands it in. Here's Christie, number 21, setting it back to Ken Sutton. Sutton. In for Tracy Katelnikov, and he's taken out of the plate, back to the line. A shot, and Kruger makes the save. Swift Current's very aggressive on their penalty kill, and they don't lay back. They certainly try to put the pressure on, and they force you to make a good play. Here's a chance now for Tinsdale, moving in for Swift Current. And the puck is hooked away from him by Ken Sutton, who got back quickly. Kevin Kaminsky. Here he goes on left wing. Kaminsky. Moving in with Kevin Yellowwaga in front of the net. A backhand shot off the stick of Yellowwaga. Here's Krasnick keeping the puck in. Both teams back at full strength. They jam the puck. It comes back to Krasnick at the line. Into the corner, setting up now. Here's Katelnikov trying to get it in front. And it's over to Tisdale. 13 coming in with Kennedy. Right in front, a shot. Sheldon Kennedy. Great effort, Dave, by number 12, using Tisdale as the decoy. A great outside-in move, pulls it through his skates, and he's got great poise with the goalkeeper, pulls it to his backhand side, puts it through its legs. A great goal by Sheldon Kennedy, and this is supposed to be a skilled, finesse team, and that's a great play. There it is right there. Really attacked the triangle well and put it through the legs of the goalkeeper, Greenlay, and that's a tremendous goal. That's obviously the play of the period right now. Sheldon Kennedy, who played for Canada's national junior team in Alaska and in Moscow, opens the scoring for Swift Current. You know, Bernie, one of the keys to playing hockey is one-on-one is -on -one play. You can't get beat one-on-one, -on -one and... Kennedy did a great job there attacking the triangle, and uh, when he beat the defender, he still had the poise on the goalkeeper. That's amazing. Delayed penalty coming up to Saskatoon as the puck is in the Saskatoon corner. Kruger is out of the net for the extra attacker, and now the penalty handed out by referee Darren Loris. This is a very crucial part of the period now because they've just got a man short situation for Saskatoon. They've just been scored on, and one of the hardest things with young players is that emotional control that poise under pressure and right now swift current i'm sure knows that late in the period they can get one now they can probably unnerve this team a little bit oh the penalized player is david stroop native of flin flon manitoba who now lives with his family here in saskatoon he'll watch the next couple of minutes from the penalty box as swift current goes on the power play enjoying a one nothing lead Darren Lawrence. The referee for the game today, 27 years of age, a native of Saskatoon. 138 left in the opening period. Face off to the left of goaltender Mike Greenlay, 
who is backed up by Dean Kuntz this afternoon. Number 16, that's Peter Soberlack. Played at a Memorial Cup in 86 as a member of Kamloops, and he's waved out, as is the Swift Current. Center number 19, Scott Sissons. Coaster against Sheldon Kennedy. Swift Current Broncos scored 180 power play goals this season. So an awesome power play during the season, and they have an opportunity here as Soberlack brings the puck in. Kruger, number 21, takes the pass. Kruger gets the return pass now from Bob Wilkie, trying to set up right in front. And having trouble with it there was Peter Soberlack. A loose puck, him. And that bounced just over the top of the net. Glorious scoring chance there for Sim, and this gives us an opportunity to check with our host here in Saskatoon, Kevin Waugh. We'll guess during the first period intermission with the Blade Captain, Tracy Kotelnikoff. We'll also talk with Murray Costello, the president of the CAHA, and we're going to look at this beautiful, beautiful building, Saskatchewan Place. It was constructed last year. Okay, Bernie. Thank you, Kevin. We have one minute and three seconds remaining in the opening period. A goal by Kennedy has given the Swift Current Broncos a 1-0 lead. Mike Greenlay, the 20-year-old goaltender, has been outstanding in the Memorial Cup for Saskatoon. He's played very well. Of course, now in the last minute of the first period, uh, down a man short, he may be called on again to make a big save. And Swift Current's power play is very good. They've uh, not looked real smooth so far this game, but uh, they've got some skilled people on the ice. And here they are setting up for the faceoff, number 13. That's Tim Tisdale, gets it back to the line to Darren Kruger. Kruger, number 21, the final minute of the opening period. It comes back now, here's Kruger, a shot. And it's over now to number 24, Bob Wilkie. To Kruger lets it go, and that sailed just wide. And it's slapped off the board by Koster down the ice, back into the swift current zone. Darren Kruger, the twin brother of goaltender Trevor. And that's broken up by Ken Sutton and Swift Current Fort deep in their own zone again. And back into his own zone, number 24 is Bob Wilkie. Pass comes from Kruger to Wilkie. Up to number 13, this is Tisdale. He lost possession of it. And Sean Snezer fires it off the board, can't get it out. Swift Current keeps the puck in. Here's Kozowski right in front. Looking for a pass. It's back now. Wilkie a shot. And Greenlay stops that. The final seconds of the opening period. And Swift Current on the power play, just failing to get that second goal. But a great tempo in the opening period, Dave. An unbelievable tempo. These two teams went end to end. It's very, very exciting hockey. We've got all these fans here really alive in Saskatoon. I think Marcel Como will be very satisfied. He's just down one nothing. They had a man short situation late in the period, and they killed it off. Well, you've got to look to it. Swift Current, as we see them leaving the ice, the number one ranked team in Canada. They went into the Memorial Cup without losing a playoff game. They lost an earlier game to Saskatoon, so they have something to prove. They really do, and that game, first game against Saskatoon, they were up 3-0, Saskatoon came back to pull it out and win it. So a 1-0 lead doesn't represent very much of a lead here. Sheldon Kennedy with the goal, assisted by Dan Lambert at 17.55 of the opening period. And there's still 23 seconds remaining in the Saskatoon penalty to Dean Holine. So Swift Current has an opportunity to go back into the dressing room and regroup with the remaining seconds on the power play heading into the second period. Now let's go downstairs and here's Kevin. All right, Bernie, with us now, Blake Captain Tracy Kotelnikov. Tracy, uh, your thoughts on how the period went? You had a number of power play opportunities but couldn't capitalize. Well, you know, the power play opportunities come with the hard work and, you know, they have to drag us down. We're going wide and uh, we just haven't been able to capitalize yet and hopefully in the second period we will talk about your situation it has been kind of frustrating because you've had an ankle injury you haven't practiced with the blade hockey club and this is your showcase this is the time that tracy katelnikov wants to show the scouts what he's all about oh well, it has i guess been a bit frustrating but you know the team's winning and i guess you can't be down at that and that's all i'm just out to contribute to the team and hope hopefully we can win what will be the key in this hockey game it's one nothing right now for swift current just your thought on what you have to do for the second and third period well, we just got to keep playing the same, and we got to start capitalizing on our chances. We had about three or four good chances that we didn't bury, and, and Kruger came up big with the stop. Goaltending, will that be a key? Well, yeah, like I said, Kruger's played well so far, and Greenlee's made some big saves at the end of the period for us, so hopefully that'll give us a lift. 
Okay, Tracy, best of luck the next 40 minutes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. If it's any consequence, the Swift Current Broncos have allowed 10 goals in two periods of play throughout the tournament. It will be interesting coming up. The nominees for Player of the Year this year, Dennis Holland from the Portland Winterhawks, Stefan Morin representing Quebec and Chicoutimi, and from the Ontario Hockey League, from Niagara Falls Thunder, the defenseman Brian Fogarty. The winner, Brian Fogarty. What can we say about this fourth-year defenseman? He put up incredible numbers in the OHL. He's a first-round draft pick in 1987 of the Quebec Nordiques. The Player of the Year from Niagara Falls Thunder, Brian Fogarty. With us now, with one nothing, Swift Current leading the Blades after the first period of play. With us now, Murray Costello, the president of the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association. Murray, we've had a great time in Saskatoon and a great time for the CAHA, I think, to display their best. Really, this is the showcase of amateur hockey and Saskatoon has done the job here well. It's particularly gratifying for all the volunteers who first give these kids the opportunity that they, they demonstrated the initiation program here earlier in the week and all of the Memorial Cup fans got a chance to see it. So we see the very top of amateur hockey starting with the beginning right up through the Memorial Cup. This is really your showcase of the season, is it not? Yes, it is. It's the top flight to amateur hockey in Canada. Uh, all of the best players are featured here. We're particularly lucky in the CHA because the owners of Major Junior Hockey make these kids available to represent Canada in the, in the World Junior Championship, and they've really performed well with gold medal performances so often, and we're very appreciative of that fact. To have 9,000 plus almost for every game, it's got to be a thrill for you, who's been involved many, many years in Canada, to see 9,000 plus for junior hockey. Yes, that's true. And with a building like this in Saskatoon, I'll tell you, it's a great endorsement for this city and for the organizing committee. I, I don't think there's been a, a, a representative of hockey at any level in the city who hasn't made a comment on how well they've been treated. So Saskatoon is certainly front and center this week. Murray, the future is very rosy, I think, for the CAHA. Yes, we're very pleased. This is a good indication. Okay, 1991 coming up. This building, this city, they desperately want the World Junior Championship. Yes, they have a bid in. Uh, they're looking very good uh, with what they did with the Briar, with what happened here this week. Uh, they are going to be someone to contend with. We've got about five cities across the country looking at it. Uh, Saskatoon is certainly key among them. It's an honor for Canada to host an event. It's prestigious. Yes, it is. It's uh, getting more and more worldwide recognition. And when they see it done the way they do it here in Canada, in, in kind of grassroots Canada, where people really appreciate the game, it adds something to it. So uh, we're looking forward to it. We're not sure yet where it's going to be, but I know that we're going to have to look awfully hard at Saskatoon. Murray, thank you very much. Uh, best of luck in the future. Thanks very much, Kev. Murray Costello, the president of the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association, one nothing. Swift Current leading the Blades after 20 minutes of play. The nominees for goaltender of the year, Danny Lorenz of Seattle for the Western Hockey League, Gus Morchauser from Kitchener, the OHL, and Stefan Fissette representing the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League from Victoriaville. The winner, Stefan Fissette. 43 regular season games, a goals against average of 3.45. But in the playoffs, when it counted the most, he was there with a 9-2 record, 2.78. He played for Team Canada at the World Junior Hockey Championship. Stefan Fouchette, the goaltender of the year. It is the Swift Current Broncos leading the Saskatoon Blades after 20 minutes of play by a score of 1-0. We have had a sensational week here in Saskatoon. Boisterous crowd, especially when it's an all-Western affair between Swift Current and Saskatoon, but the fans must be complimented here. They picked up their tickets early, and they have done an excellent job in presenting the Memorial Cup here in Saskatoon. The reason, of course, the Memorial Cup is here for the first time ever is because of this building, Saskatchewan Place. It was February 1988 that Saskatchewan Place opened, a festive night, one that most Saskatoonians were waiting for for decades. On that opening night, Canadian Major Junior Hockey League Chairman Ed Chenoweth announced that Saskatoon would host the 1989 Memorial Cup. Built for $25 million, the facility seats 7,800 for hockey and over 9,000 for concerts. Saskatchewan Place was designed for easy expansion to 16,000, hoping someday to land an NHL franchise. The front row seats are unique in that they fold back, expanding the floor space for trade shows. Uh, it's a real multi-purpose facility. We've had a wide range of events go through the facility. Uh, it all started back in 
February of 88 with Team Canada and the Blades. Uh, that was very exciting with full houses of 9,000 to over 9,000 for three consecutive days and success just continued on from there. Uh, we've had... Uh, Sutton shoots it in and the two teams are back at full strength as David Struch, number nine, in the corner for Saskatoon. Darren Kruger, number 21, goes after the puck, along with Bob Wilkie. Now it's led out by Wilkie. Lead pass intended for Tim Tisdale, and that's broken up. Here's a chance now. Wilkie moving in front. Tisdale shot. Gets the puck again. Try to backhand it in front. Around the boards it comes. This is Soberlack trying to get to the puck with Sackick. Sackick jammed against the board. Right in front of Chance. And that just whistles wide as Kevin Canop moved in. Here's a break for Coaster. Moving right in and a whistle. And there's a hooking penalty coming up. Not a very good play by the blade uh, number 20, Smarty. Hooked the back checker and allowed uh, Coaster a little more room there. And the referee, a pretty good call. Pretty alert referee right there. So a hooking penalty handed out by referee Darren Loris. There was the penalty just behind the play there. And the Saskatoon penalized player, Jason Smart. I think Coaster had enough room there to get a good scoring chance without the hook, but uh, that neutralizes, and we go back on the power play. Bernie, it's very interesting that uh, neither team has got many shots off the power play. Uh, this is the third power play for Swift Current. They have two shots so far in the power play, and of course the Blades have had three power plays and only had one shot on goal, so neither team has taken the puck to the net very much on the power play. Well, it's been a great equalizer for the Swift Current Broncos this season. Great success on the power play. They scored 447 goals this season, 180 of them on the power play, and here they are leading one to nothing, setting up. Soberlack and a shot. That's stopped by goaltender Mike Greenlay. Darwin McPherson, number 27, the glove hand pass, and the faceoff will come outside the blue line. Sheldon Kennedy has scored the only goal of the game. I know Detroit's got some big plans for this young man. He's a very skilled offensive player, and uh, he's played in two World Junior Championships, so you can tell he's a player with lots of experience. And on the power play, he's a man who can make it happen. He's always one play ahead. He's one of those players, Bernie, that can play the power play and always see the next play. They never get caught with a puck stranded. One minute and 46 seconds remaining in the penalty to Smart of Saskatoon. The pass comes to Bob Wilkie. Wilkie fires the puck off the board. Colin Bauer, number 10, tries to play it ahead to Brian Garrett, and it comes out to center. Peter Kozowski, number 23, led the WHL in game-winning goals this season with 11. He loses the puck. Christie brings it in for Saskatoon, and he's stopped. Now the Swift Current Broncos setting up again. It's knocked off the stick of Soberlack. Brought in a good play by Lambert. Loose puck at the side of the net, and jamming for it was Kozowski. Kozowski, number 23, right in front. And a shot there by Soberlack, and what a save by Greenlay off Soberlack. The power play setting up again, another shot, and that's stopped by Greenlay and clear down the ice. Well, Mike Greenlay is certainly playing the kind of game he's been playing the whole tournament. Unbelievable that save was amazing save, quick reaction save, and he got his leg over and made a tremendous save to keep the here, game where it's at. Here comes Kennedy, he was stopped. Katelnikov got to center ice and shot it in for the Saskatoon Blade. 35 seconds remaining in the minor penalty. Swift Current leading the game one to nothing. This is Trevor Sim. Number 14 moving in, drops it back. Tisdale, loose puck at the side with Soberlack jamming away. Now Tisdale trying to get it back to Wilkie and it's outside the line to center. Wilkie drops it back there for Darren Kruger. On the far side is Trevor Sim. Can't get a shot away. Eight seconds left in the power play. Right in front, here's a chance. Oh, and that just sailed wide. Kruger goes after the puck. It's stopped at the line by Kevin Kanop. Just missed by inches. Penalized player Jason Smart. Picks up the puck as he stepped out of the penalty box. Now it goes over. Number 25 is Corey Koser. He can't control it. And Kruger in his own zone, the goaltender, fires it off the board. Backboard is Jody Prasnick for Saskatoon, number two. 
Krasnick with Jason Smart. Smart feeds it along the boards to Corey Coates. Back to Smart. A pass up the middle to Darren Feeder. He was stopped. Here comes number 21, Darren Kruger, trying to get it in front to Tisdale. And that's broken up and shot down the ice. Back goes number four for Swift Current, Kevin Knopf. And it's cleared around the board. Saskatoon keeps it in. Two players behind the play mixing it up. Now number 15 for Swift Current, Blake Knox. Saskatoon has a chance, a shot. Loose puck and covering up is Trevor Kruger as Saskatoon almost gets the equalizer on that play. We're early in the second period in Saskatoon. Goaltender Mike Greenlay of Saskatoon has been sharp here in the second period. Bernie, he's played very well. This is a great toe save here. That shot was going to go in, but he made a great toe save. He's been very good. It's Swift Current is coming on now. They've started this period very, very well. And Greenlay, I think, in the first five minutes, has been very, very important to the Blades staying in this hockey game. They two teams at full strength. Here comes Swift Current moving in. Number 15 is Blake Knox. Knox in the corner trying to get it to Kyle Reeves. Reeves, number 17 for Swift Current. Jamming along the boards, he's bumped there. Puck slides to number 19, that's Kimby Daniels. Daniels helped out by Knox, tried to roll the puck in front, and good defensive play by Scott Sissons, and Bauer gets in there as well. Number eight, Rob Lalachur. Lalachur lofted a shot by Kyle Reeves, a stop. Now Bauer, he lifts the puck out to center ice. Lamb Fair up Swift Current. Leaves it for Kevin Knopf right in front of his own goal. Almost lost it there. Here's Sissons. Number 19 trying to get it in front to Kocher. And it's taken by the Broncos. Number three is Lamb Bear. Lamb Bear drops it there for Reeves. A shot. Loose puck. Score! Current's known for their goals off the rush. It's the three-on-three -three rush. Nice little drop pass by Lambert. The shot goes through to the goaltender, and the man penetrating's not picked up here. He gets his blade on it, and he puts it in, and Swift Current on a three-on-three -three got a great scoring chance here. There's the drop, there's the shot, the loose puck. He just gets his stick on it, and a tremendous goal. Excellent uh, play by the current Broncos. The goal by Blake Knott. Number 15, the native of Thompson, Manitoba, Coach Graham James says he's been a real surprise this year. A 16-year-old gives Swift Current a 2-0 lead. Now the Saskatoon Blades, Sutton, fires the puck towards the net. It comes back to Sean Snezer. Snezer, number four, kept it in. The Broncos get the puck out to center. Snezer has it again for Saskatoon, gives it to Sutton. Back to Sean Snezer, a native of Abbotsford, British Columbia. Trevor Kruger, the goaltender, can't get it out. Sutton keeps it in. Kruger, out of the net frequently. The goaltender for Swift Current plays the puck. It's brought out now by McFarland. McFarland gets it over. Here comes Kennedy. Kennedy taken out of the play, and the puck slides into the corner to Ken Sutton. Sutton now has it for Saskatoon. Up with Garrett. Over the line, Sutton with Garrett heading for the net. Drops it back to Sean Snezer. Off the board. Trapping it is Christie right in front. Trying to set up Kevin Kaminsky. Courtney, you can really sense that Swift Current's relaxing now. They're starting to open up a little bit. And Saskatoon has got to get uh, a little more poison and get back in this hockey game with that next goal for sure. Swift Current enjoying a 2 0 lead as the puck cleared to an open wing. Snezer. Forced back by Kyle Reed. Tries to clear it in front. Tisdale intercepts the shot. Off the arm of goaltender Mike Greenlay. Around the boards it comes. Kept in there by Brian Sackett. His brother Joe is here, a member of the Quebec Nordiques and a former member of the Swift Current Broncos. Now Saskatoon drew Sotel. Sotel got a weak shot away. Lambert. Plays it off the boards. It goes to Brian Sackett. 
Up the middle now to Tisdale. Tisdale drops it there, Reeves. And he got a shot, but it was blocked by defenseman Jody Prasnick. Darren Bader. Prasnick. Clears it up on the right side. Whole line just slapped it to center ice. One of Marcel Como's uh, objectives in this game was not to give up very much numerical advantage on the rush. And Swift Current now, they've got a couple of three-on-twos lately, and they're very dangerous on the rush. And it's very important for the Blades to tighten up. There's Coker right in front. And a great chance by Darren Bader. Bader, number 22, set up beautifully in front, but failed to capitalize. Here comes Daniels back for Swift Current. Up over the line, Daniels drops it there for Trevor Sim. And the Blades, here's a two-on-one. Moving up over the line, trying to get it in front of Bauer. And that was stopped on the short side. Loose puck in front. And the Broncos quickly get possession. McFarland with Daniels. Up over the line, Sim hitting for the front of the net. A shot. That's kicked out by goaltender Greenlay. And it's shot down the ice. Icing is indicated, but it doesn't go far enough. Lambert back to get it. Bernie Saskatoon is opening up. They've got two pretty good scoring chances themselves here in this, this particular shift. But boy, they just can't give up that numerical advantage. Swift Current's pretty sharp. And here they come again, the Swift Current Broncos with Daniels. Kennedy takes the pass. That was broken up by Ken Sutton, and he shoots it down the ice. Back for it now for Swift Current goes Darren Kruger. Kruger, number 21, slaps it off the boards. Soberlack got to his own blue line. He was checked. Kaminsky racing into the corner. He bumps there with Darren Kruger. Kaminsky trying to feed the puck to Brian Garretts. And it's brought out by the Broncos again. Soberlack at the blue line. It's brought back by Ken Sutton. Let's it go and a glove save by Kruger. Then Sutton bumps in front and the puck slides right back into the Saskatoon zone. Talk about great tempo and excitement. Canadian Major Junior Hockey. What a game this is. Bernie, it's unbelievable. This is about two and a half minutes now without a whistle. And there we have a whistle. There'll be penalties one aside. The Swift Current Broncos enjoying a 2-0 lead midway in the second period. Well, a little mix-up in front of the Swift Current bench and two players in the penalty box. 10-26 in the second period. Some great names on the Memorial Cup over the years, 1947. Memorial Cup was won by Toronto, St. Michael's, Red Kelly, Fleming McCall, among the names on that 1947 Toronto St. Michael's team. For the last four or five minutes, this game is going the way Swift Current wants it to go. They want to open up. They want to get some scoring chances. They want them to take some chances with the Blades, and the Blades are going to have to stay with their game plan, which is to play tight checking and not open up like this. Almost a steal there by Tisdale, and the Broncos get possession. The pass comes up on the right side to Mark McFarland, lets it go. And that's deflected off number eight, Rob Lalashur, and we have Another penalty coming up for hooking, so we'll have a power play opportunity when we return to beautiful Saskatchewan Plate. The penalized player is Colin Bauer, off for hooking, so Swift Current will go on the power play. Lots of traffic in front here by the Blades. Point shot trying to get through traffic, and that's one of their strategies, Bernie, is to get lots of traffic in front of Kruger. They think that bothers them. He's a very intense, emotional guy, and they try to make sure they've got traffic in front to make his job a little bit more difficult. So Soberlack at center, and that's broken up and shot down the ice by the Saskatoon Blades. The Broncos setting up Bob Wilkie, number 24. Second round draft of the Detroit Red Wings in 87. Shot in by Dan Lambert. Brian Sackick, number 26. Digs after it, it comes back. Wilkie is knocked against the board by Ken Sutton. Here's a chance to the point, a drive by Lambert, and a save by Mike Greenlay, the coach of Swift Current Broncos, a native of Winnipeg. Graham James is third year with Swift Current. I would imagine that, that Graham James right now is thinking to himself, this could be the key part of the hockey game. Uh, they're up 2-0, they're on a power play. He knows if they score here, that 3-0 lead could be very commanding. So I'm sure he's telling his players now, be assertive, don't lay back. Let's get that third goal. 
There's a quote from the coach of the Swift Current Broncos, Graham James. The number one ranked team in all of Canada this year. They secured first overall by the largest margin ever in WHL history, 25 points. And here's a scoring chance. And that just hit the mesh behind the net. And the fans back there thought it might have gone in. The Broncos on the power play. Sackett has possession. Ryan Sackett to Lambert. He has it, and it's knocked off his stick by Corey Coaster. Bernie, I thought Lambert made a great play there. He held the puck, let the man go down, but a good second effort play by the Blade Delta Killer, and they're out of trouble. Here comes Lambert. A sizzling shot just goes wide. Sackett keeps the puck in. It comes back now to Bob Wilkie. Wilkie over to Dan Lambert. Lambert trying to get it in front for Soberlack. Number 16 gets it, but he couldn't get a good shot. Brian Sackett setting up on the power play. They've been awesome on the power play during the season. Setting up here, Daniels in front, and it's intercepted and brought out by Jason Christian. Here's Christian. And he's taken out of the play by Bob Wilkie, number 24. Christie still digging after the puck. 12 seconds remaining in the power play opportunity. Comes out to Cattell the cop. He knocked the Brook current player Sackick down, and here's Lambert deep in his own zone. Kruger comes away out of the net. Bauer is back, the penalized player, and the team's at full strength. Here comes Trevor Sim. Got the center, was stopped, the lead pass, and Kruger comes away out of the net to play that to center ice. McPherson over to Ken Sutton, and the Broncos slap it out to the center ice zone. Sutton. Good spin there, then backhands the puck in. Seven minutes and 30 seconds left. Whole line a shot. Here's a chance. Sisson scores! two-line offside pass called by linesman Jay Scherz of Vancouver. 6.48 remaining in the second period. The Memorial Cup Championship. I'm Bernie Pascal with Dave King, Kevin Waugh, and our CTV sports crew. Swift Current leading by one goal. Face off inside the Saskatoon line and slapped right back in there by Darren Kruger, number 21. He had 63 power play assists this season, a WHL record. Here's Darren Bader shooting the puck in right on to goaltender Trevor Kruger, who makes the save. Now the Saskatoon defenseman, Jody Presley, had trouble there. Power moves in to help him out, number 10. Power trying to backhand it along the board. Loose puck at the side, they try to jam it there, as right on top of the play was Sheldon Kennedy. And it's lifted up into the crowd and out of play. We mentioned the Memorial Cup. The players here attempting to get their name on that coveted Canadian Major Junior Hockey Trophy, 1956. The Toronto Marlboros won the Memorial Cup. The likes of Bob Colford, Harry Neal, and the captain of that team was Al McNeil, 
who's involved in a playoff now of a major sort, the Calgary Flames against the Montreal Canadiens. That should be a great series of Calgary and Montreal. We're seeing a great game here. We're seeing two junior teams put on a great display of hockey, and it's been an exciting game with the crowd really a big factor in this game, Bernie, and the Blades now, that goal should settle them down, and this should be very interesting this last six minutes of the second period. Swift Current Broncos won 55 games this season. Saskatoon won 42. The final is here in the Memorial Cup. The other teams, Laval Titans and the Peterborough Peets. Peterborough lost the semifinal last night, 6-2 to Swift Current. Number 19 of Saskatoon, Scott Sisson, who has scored their goal, fires the puck in, and Peter Soberlack got it out to center, and Sutton shoots it right back into the Swift Current zone with Danny Lambert after it there. Here comes Lambert, and he ran into the referee, Loris, with uh, the puck as he tried to bring it out of his own zone. Bernie, this is one of the matchups that they were trying to get to gain the Saskatoon. They want Daniels, certainly want his line out against uh, Scott Sissons. And again, when you get your matchup, it really helps. Here comes Coaster in with Sissons, and Coaster can't get a shot. Loose puck at the side, and Katelnikov was all tied up before he could jam it in. And the Broncos bring it out to center ice. Soberlack gets it ahead. Here's Daniels, number 19, and he's spun around as he is bumped by shot Sissons. Jason Smart, number 20. Native of Prince George, who now lives in Red Deer. Gets it to Sean Snezzer. Snezzer just shoots the puck into the swift current zone. Loose puck, five minutes remaining in the second period. Darwin McPherson, big defenseman, number 27 for the Blades, shoots it in. A delayed offside, waved off. And here's the puck in the corner. After it for swift current is Kevin Knopf. Knopf trying to get it out of his own zone. They all jam against the boards. In the swift current zone, four players there, but the puck is still loose. Now they get the whistle from referee Darren Loris. The swift current Broncos lead by one here at Saskatchewan Place. The Memorial Cup at stake today, and Toshiba will present a Toshiba color television to the Memorial Cup most valuable player. Another of the many awards on the line today here at Saskatchewan Place in Saskatoon. Here's a chance in front now. Number 12, Drew Sautel, but it was knocked off his stick. Reeves brings it back in to Tisdale in front, and Reeves is taken to the ice. There will be a penalty coming up to Drew Sautel for interference. So Sautel will head to the penalty box. Swift Current will go on the power play. Drew Sautel for interference, and he had to do that, Dave, nullifying a big scoring chance. Well, he definitely have to come back because that was a four-on-two rush. The uh, Swift Current defenseman joined the rush. Sastu turned it over deep, and it's a four-on-two, and he was forced to come back, and he made a good second effort there, but uh, a little bit aggressive on his back checking, but certainly a play he has to make. I wonder who will be the MVP in this game. There have been some great ones over the years. Barry Beck, Stan Smeal, Dale Howard, Chuck, Adam Creighton. Who will be the MVP today? Here's Sissons. He has scored the Saskatoon goal. Number 19 and a shot. Kruger stops that. Now, here come the Broncos. Led by number 12, Kennedy. Gets the return pass. The shot sticks a loose puck. And covering up his green lay, then it's knocked away. There's a three on two on that power play. And boy, that's dangerous. They had a great scoring chance. They have two good scoring chances. One off the shot, one off the rebound. And they have the puck again, a lead pass. Here's Sheldon Kennedy. Darwin McPherson back quickly and it's broken up and slapped outside the line. Wilkie drops it deep in his own zone. I'm sure Marcel Camo would like them to play a little bit tighter here on their penalty count. They're giving up too many uh, advantages on the rush here and uh, Saskatoon's game is to play tight checking and not get uh, giving up too much to Swift Current, especially in that neutral zone, Bernie. They make some good things happen. Well, they're on the power play and we talk about Swift Current's great success during the season. Number 21 of Swift Current is Darren Kruger. There's your three on two and a nice trailing pass to uh, Kennedy. A good shot, a loose puck. Those are the kind of plays you can't afford to give up because when you can score in a power play on the rush, that's a real bonus. Swift Current Broncos scored 10 power play goals in one game this season. They defeated Moose Jaw 11 to three. 10 of their goals were on the power play. That was back in mid-January. And they have a power play now leading two to one. Kruger out of the net. 
Gets it ahead to Bob Wilkie. In for checking is Brian Garrett, number 14 of Saskatoon. Soberlack takes the pass. On the left side there for Kimby Daniels. That's broken up. Here comes Christie. Christie, number 21, going in against Lambert. Still has possession right in front, trying to get a shot. Lambert had a firm grip on Christie and got away with that. 2.45 remaining here in the second period. Off the board and shot down the ice, off the stick of Tracy Katelnikov. This is much better penalty killing. They're doing a very good job. Swift Current's first pass and their breakout has always been off. Score! Katelnikov! A turnover in the Swift Current zone and it's all tied at two. The capacity crowd at Saskatchewan Place as Katelnikov on a costly giveaway, a big turnover here, Dave. That's a big give over, a turnover. There's no question those kind of plays hurt you. On your power play breakout, you've got to be sharp, and they look like they're a little tired. And now there's the giveaway again. Throws it across into traffic. Picks it off, a good shot. And now Saskatoon is right back in the hockey game. You couldn't ask for a better finish for Saskatoon here in terms of going late into the second period. And to tell the cop was with us in the first intermission. The captain of Saskatoon gets one of the biggest goals of his junior career, and he had 41 goals this season. The crowd very appreciative of the effort of Katelnikov. Now, here comes Kennedy, right back in for Swiftcurrent. Dropped it back, setting up Canuck, and he can't get a shot, and it's cleared off the stick of Scott Sisson. Sotel is back on the ice. A short-handed goal by Katelnikov. Here's a chance now, right in front, and number 23, Kazowski, trying to get a shot. It's stopped by goaltender Greenlay on the second attempt, and the blade shoot it down the ice. 145 remaining in the second period. This is Kevin Kanaf on the right side to Kazowski, and it's an offside pass. Well, you couldn't ask for a better finale. We're tied at two in period number two at Saskatchewan Place. Second period intermission, we'll talk with Sheldon Kennedy of the Swift Current Broncos, John Winter and Marv Hall, two major sponsors of the Memorial Cup, and the chairman of the Canadian Hockey League, Ed Chenoweth, guesting second period intermission. Now back to Bernie. Kevin, what a great job. Bolson Breweries, with their president, John Winter, Barry Thompson locally, they take pride in their role as a great sponsor, and Cooper Canada, with Cliff Gable, Marv Hall, Dave Grant and company, they've sponsored the Memorial Cup, the co-sponsor for seven years. We salute Molson Breweries and Cooper Canada for their involvement. 125 remaining in the second period. We're tied at two in a shot, and it's called back to the center ice zone. Bernie, you've got to wonder what uh, right now the it's in the minds of the Swift Current team. They blew a three-goal lead in the game one versus Saskatoon. Now they've uh, had a two-goal lead disappear, and so certainly the Blades now have got the initiative, and uh, but they should be going into the third period here in a very close hockey game, exactly what Marcel Como wanted. He wanted to win the third period with a score close, or ideally the lead, but at least close, and now he's got what he wants. Record crowds for the 1989 Memorial Cup Championship. Saskatoon did a great job in curling, hosting the Briar, and here they are. Outstanding support for the Canadian Major Junior Hockey Championship, the coveted Memorial Cup. The top two teams, an all-Western final, an all-Saskatchewan final, Swift Current and Saskatoon. Goaltender Trevor Kruger. His backup today is Don Blishen as the puck comes out to center ice. The final minute of the second period, Lambert drops it in front and tried to get it back to Sackick at the line, and it's rolled away from him. Number 24 is Bob Wilkie. Wilkie gets it ahead to Danny Lambert. Lambert is taken out of the play, and Scott Sissons has it up on the right side, and Koster just slaps it off the board down the ice. No icing, the puck rolls. 30 seconds remaining in the second period. Here comes Wilkie. Gets it ahead. Up now to Darren Kruger. Left it there, a shot, and that's blocked by Ken Sutton, who backhands it up. A 
race for the puck. Coaster trying to get to it. Here's Coaster moving in. A shot. He's strong. He's got pretty good speed. Good puck protection right there. He outraces Sackett. It just slipped through Kruger, and boy, is that a big goal. Now it's 3 2. 17 seconds left in the period. Watch this effort by Coaster. Good puck protection right there. Digs it out with his skates, and a good shot. It just sneaks through Kruger. That's going to turn this game around a lot in terms of Saskatoon going into the third period. Very high. They're going to come out now, and it's going to be very interesting to see if Kirk Curran can maintain their poise, Bernie. Well, they'll be rejoicing in Kelvington, Saskatchewan, the home of Corey Coaster, as he gets a big goal here, giving the Blades a 3-2 lead. The final 10 seconds of the second period. Buck is brought out now by Peter Soberlack. Got to the line over to Sin. And that'll do it. The second period is over. And the capacity crowd at Saskatchewan plays again up on their feet congratulating and saluting the saskatoon blades a gutsy effort they were down by two tremendous effort bernie to be down two goals and to be facing a power play which they killed off uh that seemed to turn it around and then they scored that shorthanded goal that seemed to really give saskatoon some initiative and now we've got a game where they're going into the third period with the lead they're a grinding team a very solid defensive team and they're going to make it very tough for swift current well, this is the 14th meeting this season between Swift Current and Saskatoon. Swift Current has won nine of the 13, and this is the important game. This is the one they have to come out in the third period, shooting on all cylinders. And the summary there in the second period here at Saskatchewan Place. Swift Current knocks, and then Sissons, Katelnikov, and then the go-ahead goal by Corey Koser, unassisted at 1943. One of the biggest challenges for the coaches now is you've got two teams that are young, emotional, and they've got to get this team, both these teams, to settle down and play a good third period. Well, we're all anxiously looking forward to period number three, and we're looking forward to the upcoming intermission features. And here's Kevin. Thank you very much, Bernie. With us now, Sheldon Kennedy, one of the leaders of the Swift Current Broncos. He scored the opening goal of today's game, but the obvious question, what happened in the second period? Well, uh, it's always been a weak period for us. Uh, I think we gave up uh, 10 goals in the first four games that we played, and, uh, you know, in the second period, I think that, uh, you know, today, um, you know, we let up a bit, but uh, we still got the third period, and uh, usually it's our best, so hopefully we can come out and, uh, you know, pot a few more goals. Kind of two bad goals, Katelnikov and Koser. Uh, could the team be tiring? They did play less than 24 hours last night in the semifinal against Peterborough. I don't think we're too tired. Um, you know, it's I think that uh, we got to, uh, you know, just come out and play a lot smarter. We made we gave them, uh, we made too many mistakes and they capitalized on them. And uh, you know, I think if we come out and play smart hockey. Uh, I, I I think we can come out of here with a victory. 20 minutes left. Thank you very much, Sheldon. Thank you. Good. After 40 minutes of play, the Saskatoon Blades have grabbed a 3-2 lead over Swift Current. We'll be back in just a moment from Saskatchewan Place. The nominees for Defenseman of the Year from the West, Dan Lambert of Swift Current. From Quebec, Yves Racine of Victoriaville. And the winner, Brian Fogarty of Niagara Falls Thunder of the Ontario Hockey League. He was the leading scorer this year with 155 points. He set records for most points for defensemen for goals and assists, breaking records from Denny Potvin to Bobby Orr. The top defenseman, Brian Fogarty of Niagara Falls. We're back live at Saskatchewan Place. Tremendous 40 minutes of action between the Swift Current Broncos and the Saskatoon Blades. Any organization needs sponsors to be very successful, and Canadian Hockey League is very fortunate to have two of the best, Molson's and Cooper. With us now is John Winter. John, as a company of Molson's, you've supported hockey for years on years. We have, Kevin. We've been involved in hockey at many levels throughout uh, all parts of Canada. It's just great to be here in Saskatoon to uh, uh, give some credit to uh, people where credit is due. What a great organization, what a great tournament. Of course, Molson's has been synonymous with the National Hockey League, and I think you've just signed a new agreement with the junior leagues that will help 
development in this country. We've renewed our agreement with the CAHA to continue our involvement in Memorial Cup for a further five years, and we're very excited about that. Great. Molson's a great corporate sponsor for Canadian Hockey League. Also, another great sponsor is Cooper Canada. With us now is Marv Hall. Marv, uh, Cooper always comes out on top of everything. You are so far ahead of the innovations, what the kids need for protection-wise, and again, you've succeeded in another... Uh, uh, what we have here today. Kevin, a lot of this happens because of our involvement with Molson's and the Canadian Hockey League. It allows us to introduce new products. We think this is the toughest league in the world. Mm -hmm. The products are put to test. Today we have a new shin pad and we're featuring an air management suspension technology. There is air heat sealed inside the inner part of this pad. It will fit next to the shin for comfort, but also when there's a blow, the air is deflected throughout. Secondary protection there is a poly sling between the outer part of the pad and on the inside that gives you extra protection for the calf of the leg. In addition, we have high density foam, a complete wrap around for any of those errant slashes to the back or side of the leg. We take it up higher for that area underneath the pants, mm -hmm. lower for the area between the skate, and finally, we have everything riveted instead of stitched the old way, so more durability. So we're pretty excited about this. We're really excited about it. Marv, thank you very much. An exciting game so far. Pleasure to be here. Okay, Marv Hall and John Winter, two great corporate sponsors for Canadian Hockey League. We'll be back with more in just a moment. The nominees for Scholastic Player of the Year, Daniel Lacroix of Granby representing Quebec, Brian Collinson of Toronto representing the Ontario Hockey League, and from the Western Hockey League, Jeff Nelson of the Prince Albert Raiders. And for Nelson, First year in the league, he was the winner of the Scholastic Player of the Year. For Nelson of the Raiders, 11 grade 11 student combined his hockey with schooling. Not only did Nelson score 30 goals with the Raiders this year, but he averaged over 90% in school grades. Just a tremendous year on and off the ice by Jeff Nelson of the Prince Albert Raiders, our Scholastic Player of the Year in Canada. Tremendous second period by the Saskatoon Blades. They're down 2-0. They came roaring back to take the lead on a late goal by Tracy Katelnikoff and Corey Koser. 3-2 Blades lead Swift Current after 40 minutes of play. It has been a huge week in Saskatoon, and none is prouder, I'm sure, right now than Ed Chenoweth, who is president of the Canadian Hockey League. Ed is also the president of the Western Hockey League. Being your old hometown, they have done a marvelous job. They certainly have, Kevin. I think it goes without saying that... Uh, when you look at the Memorial Cups that I've attended over the 17 years I've been involved, I don't think there's any that has measured up with this one. The Saskatoon Blade organization and the people that have been associated with them, the fan support not only in the city of Saskatoon but throughout Saskatchewan. When the people from Ontario and Quebec talk to us, uh, they're just as excited as we are. It's been a fantastic show. I think uh, when I look back on it, uh, this game is, is just as exciting as any game that I think I've seen for some time. I don't know what else we could ask for. Two Western teams, and if that sounds a bit selfish, I guess it is, but uh, it's just fantastic, and I hope it continues. This has been a great run for you, Ed. You've had your, your son, Dean Chenault, play with Medicine Hat the last two years. He watched him win the Memorial Cup. You were connected with the Bra Blade organization back in the early days. You've seen it all. Well, I started with the Saskatoon Blades. Uh, it's an amazing situation that uh, here we are 20-some uh, years later, and uh, they're hosting a Memorial Cup. They look like they stand an excellent chance to win it. Just couldn't ask for any more than that, Kev. Ed, thanks very much. Consider continued success. It's been going well. Thank you very kindly. Ed Chenoweth, our guest, president of the Canadian Hockey League and the Western Hockey League. One period to go between the Blades and the Broncos. Our nominees this year for the Plus Minus Award from the Western Hockey League, Darren Stoke of the Medicine Hat Tigers and Steve LaRouche representing Trois Rivières of the Quebec League and from Ontario, Brian Fogarty of Niagara Falls. A triple winner this year, Brian Fogarty. This defenseman is six foot one, 205 pounds. His plus minus ratio this year was unbelievable, plus 91. Four times this year, he was selected player of the week in the Ontario Hockey League. A triple winner, Brian Fogarty of Niagara Falls. This city and this arena is ready to explode. 20 minutes left in the third period. We now have Bernie and Dave to give us analysis of the second. Thank you, Kevin. The coveted Memorial Cup is at stake here, Dave. And, uh, you know, you talk about a turnaround. Swift Current, the number one ranked team in Canada, takes that 2-0 lead. And then Saskatoon rebounds with 
three quick goals and uh, now heading into the third period they enjoy that one goal lead they scored those three goals in about seven minutes to Bernie and they really showed a lot of second effort on all those plays and Swift Current I'm sure will be very concerned now because they've once again blown a, a two goal lead and uh, going into the third period it's going to be very interesting well there are several ex exciting plays so far the Longine Whitnauer play of the game will be something we'll have to look at heading into the third period there have been some great goals Katelnikov uh, tying up the action in the second period. This is a pass through traffic on the power play by Swift Curran. He picks it up and he lets a blast go from the top of the circles and it's just not stoppable by Kruger. And uh, that was a play where Swift Curran on the power play kind of forced a puck through traffic and he picked it up and it's in the net. Well, that uh, tied it up and then uh, late in the period and you talk about giving a team a lift. Saskatoon playing at home before more than 8,000 fans and Koser is one of the real favorites with the Saskatoon Blades. He responds uh, with the fifth goal of the game, and that's the important one at this point. This goal was a good effort played by Koser, too, because he raced uh, 26 down the ice here, and he does an excellent job. He battles him right here. He's got a forward he battles with. He wins the puck. Uh, that's a good snapshot go, and it just squeaks through Kruger, and that was a good second effort played by Koser because he had out fight 26 for the puck and did a good job of getting it. Strange feeling for a goaltender. He knows he has a piece of that goal, and then he hears the roar from the crowd and knowing that he didn't have complete control. Those kind really hurt because they just kind of get, they kind of squeak through you, Bernie. If it's a great shot that goes by you, you can understand it, but when the puck goes through you, it sometimes concerns the goalie and the coach. Well, we're going to have to brace ourselves for the third period. There will be excitement and action of plenty with the Saskatoon Blades leading by one goal at Saskatchewan Place, Saskatoon. We've had record crowds here at Saskatchewan Place. They had 8,378 for the semifinal last night. After eight games, 68,000 plus, and after today's game, some 76,000 witnessing the Memorial Cup Championship, Dave. I think the whole week's been a real good commercial for major junior hockey in Canada. The teams that were here, Laval was an excellent team that played very well. Peterborough Pete, certainly a team that's got lots of skill and very well coached by Dick Todd. And these two teams have put on a great show today, so it's been just a great week for junior hockey in Canada. So the third period is underway. The Saskatoon Blades enjoying a 3-2 lead. Kruger, the goaltender, out of the net. The puck comes to Blake Knox. Knox gets it ahead. Here's Peter Kozowski, a delayed offside at the Saskatoon Blue Line. Toshiba Facsimile will present at Toshiba Color Television to the Memorial Cup most valuable player. And there have been some outstanding valuable players in this game today. And there's Kaminsky. And you know, the Children's Wish Foundation of Saskatchewan, the Saskatoon Blades have adopted that as their charity. Every point Kevin Kaminsky got this season they raised $7,400 for the Children's Wish Foundation of Saskatchewan. Some wishes are simple, others more difficult, but none are impossible. And what a great job that program has done throughout Canada and here in Saskatchewan. After the puck goes Bob Wilkie. Trying to get out of his own zone. They'll try again. We're early in the third period. Foul of Saskatoon fires it in. The two teams start the third period at full strength. Here comes Darren Kruger. Gets a pass on the right side. Heading for the front is Knox, but the pass failed to reach him. It's knocked down at the line. Here's Kozowski trying to set it up. Kozowski gets it over to Kennedy. Into the corner. Right in front of the net is Knox. Looking for a pass. Oh, and it just hopped over his stick. And the Saskatoon Blades get it again. This is Coaster who scored the... Go ahead goal late in the second period. Koser setting up. He's checked by Tisdale. And now it's cleared to an open side and after it for Swift Current is Kevin Knopf. Snezer behind his own goal. Leaves it there for Ken Sutton. Saskatoon Blades leading the Swift Current. Broncos by one goal and they jam it beside netminder Mike Greenlay. Bernie, in this third period, it's going to be very important that both these teams play a very disciplined game. They just can't afford to take any uh, penalties that would be in a cheap variety. They both got to stay uh, even strength. And that's tough to do when you've got an emotional crowd and a Memorial Cup at stake. It's really difficult for young players to maintain their poise. And that'll be the job of both these coaches now to do that kind of thing. It's been 18 years since a team from Quebec has won the Memorial Cup. The last team from Quebec 
Well, Guy Lafleur was a member of that team, the Quebec Ramparts, in 71. Of course, there's a shot. Cornwall won the Memorial Cup. But they played in the Quebec League, but, of course, Cornwall, an Ontario team. But here in the championship of 89, it's Saskatoon and Swift Current, an all-Saskatchewan final. And Saskatoon before a capacity crowd at home enjoying the lead, and they try to get the puck ahead to Yellow Wagon. He's knocked down, and it's now brought out by Brian Sackett. Here's Sackett for Swift Current. Coming in with Lambert, trying to drop it to Lambert, and Jason Smart has it for Saskatoon. He shoots it in. Kruger stopped that. Now Swift Current. Here's McFarland coming up with Tisdale. McFarland at the side, trying to jam it all right on the line, and it's slapped outside the center ice. Brought back in now and spun around and knocked to the ice. No penalty there, and the fans offer the response there. They were a little concerned. McPherson trying to get the puck out, beating it to Darren Bader. Bernie, that last chance by Tisdale was very close. That puck just was starting to head over the line when it was poked out of the net there. And uh, the three-on-two again. Three-on-two situation where Swift Current generated a scoring chance. We played three minutes in period three. Kruger out of the net for Swift Current. Christie was in there looking for the puck. It comes out to the blue line, but kept in at the line. Here's Christie, a shot. Over now to Darren Bader. Bader setting up. For Saskatoon, trying to get it to Garretts. At the side of the goal is Jason Christie, and it's cleared to the blue line to center. Sean Snezzer. Feeds it over. It's stopped at the line, and here comes Swift Current. It's brought in by Wilkie. Wilkie puts on the brakes, leaves it there. Daniels a shot. In behind the goal now goes Sean Snezzer of Saskatoon. And Garretts gets in there, and they hold it against the board. 16-12 remaining to be played in period three in Saskatoon. Their respective coaches, Graham James and Marcel Comer. Both of them have unique coaching styles. Marcel's got a very hard, forechecking team who really relies on their checking skills to be, make them very competitive. Graham James has got more of a, of a flow style, more initiative on offense, and both these two coaches have got different teams. They've both done a fine job in developing teams that play a little different game. So the Saskatoon Blades enjoying a one-goal lead here in the third period. They have possession. Colin Bauer. He gets it ahead now. Scott Sissons, who has scored one of the Saskatoon goals. Number 14 is Brian Garrett. Now it comes out to Sheldon Kennedy. Kennedy up for swift current. Knox heading for the net. Here's Kennedy, and it's knocked off his stick by Kevin Kaminsky. Slides out to the blue line, and Swift Current back quickly to get it. Number 15 is Knox. Slapped away from him, and it goes over to Danny Lambert. To the line, a delayed offside, but it's brought out by Blake Knox. Knox straight up the middle for Swift Current. Moving in against defenseman Sutton, cleared it into the corner. Peter Kozowski. Up the puck in front, it's intercepted and brought back out by Jason Christie. This rolls off his stick and it slaps at the line. Sutton trying to keep it in, failed. Kennedy goes after it for Swift Current. Now Kevin Kanop. Kanop needs a pass on the right side to Peter Kozowski. Kozowski, Sackett trying to catch up to it and it's broken up and shot down the ice. Deep in his own zone goes Bob Wilkie. He touches it and it's icing called against the Saskatoon Blades with the faceoff coming deep in their zone to the right of the goaltender. Takes many sponsors to make the Memorial Cup a success. We'd like to salute Toshiba Facsimile for the use of the copying machines. They've really helped the organizing committee. An outstanding job by Toshiba Facsimile here at the Memorial Cup at Saskatchewan Place. Goal Blades goal. Is the chance. The puck comes back to Swift Current. Darren Kruger. Kruger out to center. Trying to get it there was Dean Holine. Now he races right back into the Swift Current zone but can't get to the puck. Up on the left side. This is Brian Sackett beating a pass. Tisdale a shot. And Greenlay makes the save. As Swift Current looking for the equalizer. 
trailing by one goal in the Memorial Cup 1989. The respective goaltenders, Dave Greenlay and Kruger. They both played very well. Mike Greenlay's had an excellent game today, and the Blades uh, scored three goals on six shots on Scott Kruger, but they were good shots. So the only the last goal was a tough one when it threw him, but they both played very well, and they'll both play important roles going down now to the last part of this uh, third period. And the respective goal backup goaltenders have been important members of their team, Dean Coots of Saskatoon and Don Blushen of Swift Current during the season to get their teams to the Memorial Cup. Now Swift Current. This is Kennedy moving in. It's got scores! Kennedy! Sheldon yeah. Kennedy ties the game for Swift Current. That goal was scored by uh, Kimby Daniels. He drove the middle lane. Sheldon uh, threw it across to him, and he shoots the puck right past the screen. It just got the short side on Mike Greenlay. Once again, they score off the rush, and that's a classic example of a good three-on-two. We pick it up here. Bernie and Daniels has got the puck. He feeds it wide to uh, Kennedy, and watch Daniels drive the middle lane. He gets it back, and a quick snapshot just beat Mike Greenlay to the short side. And, they're known for their ability to score off the rush and to go to the net, and we'll see it again here. A quick snapshot, good effort by the Blade defenseman, but the shot just snuck by him. Now we're in a 3-3 game. And what a great game, Bernie. Watch this shot. Right under his leg. The Mike Greenlee, I think, was screened by the sprawling defenseman. It just went under his leg, under his shin pad, and just caught the short side. And once again, I'm not sure you can blame Mike Greenlee for that one. So the play started by Kennedy and finished off beautifully. And a tying goal there. What an opportunity. Kimby Daniels capitalizing. Here they come again. A shot. And Soberlack let that go just wide. That shot was off the goalpost, Bernie, and that's a big one right there. The Blades defensemen are backing in a little bit now, not holding the blue line as much as they have to against Swift Current. Now Saskatoon, Darren Bader shoots it in. Swift Current tying it up, heading for the net now, trying to get the pass to Lambert. And it's intercepted and brought back by Kevin Yellow Wagon. Yellow Wagon in with Darren Bader. Yellow Wagon feeds it in front. Snezer a shot. Now Snezer digs after the puck and it goes to Kevin Knopp. And does this open up the action? Here comes Tisdale moving in, dropped it right in front. The shot. Great save by Mike Greenlay. End to end action in the third period. Here come the Blades moving in. Kaminsky trying to get a shot, and he's taken out of the play. Bernie, this game is really opening up, and uh, coaches, uh, we're always kind of defensive, but this is entertaining hockey. I mean, this is what it's about. We've got 9,000 people seeing an exciting game with chances at both ends, and Marcel may be a little concerned about the opening up, but uh, it sure is exciting. It makes for a great game. We're tied at three. Kruger is stopped, and going after the puck was Jason Christie. The goaltender, Trevor Kruger, lost the stick. It's in the corner. Here comes Swift Current again with Darren Kruger just shooting the puck in. Bauer going after the puck and it's caught up in the mesh in behind the net. Action of plenty in the 1989 Memorial Cup Championship at Saskatchewan Place. Stellar goaltending. Mike Greenlay, a spectacular save here. This is an excellent save, Bernie. It's a play with a nice little play off the rush. He gets across the net, makes the save, and the puck goes high over the net. But a great play off the rush again by Swift Current. The play defense and went to the middle with the puck carrier, opened up the wide man, and once again, it's your goalie and the shooter one-on-one, -on -one, and Mike Greenlay was just excellent there. The Memorial Cup Championship poster feeds the pass on the far side, moving in is Garrett, and he's taken out of the play. Up to number 15, Knox trying to get the puck out. Poster deep in the swift current zone is hauled down. There will be a penalty. And Saskatoon will go on the power play. We're tied at three in period three. Dan Lambert is the penalized player off for hooking. Coaster's got great puck protection skills. He's a big man, a strong man, and he uses his body to shield the puck, and it forced Lambert to check through the man to get to the puck, and 
the risk is when you do that, you're going to get a hooking penalty. They're piercing now, Bernie, uh, power play-wise. Uh, Saskatoon's had a reasonable power play in the tournament, but not so good today. And, of course, Swift Current, a man short, they like to try to score. They're not just satisfied killing the penalty. They will try to score a shorthanded goal. Well, during the season, Swift Current had 16 shorthanded goals. And they have Lambert in the penalty box now. We're tied at three. Saskatoon's closer. Number 25, a first-round pick of the Detroit Red Wings, getting set for this face-off. Oh. On power plays, face-offs are always so important. Win that face-off. There's a shot by Bauer, and goaltender Kruger covers up. Minsky, number 23 out there, a draft pick of the Minnesota North Stars. Bernie, and talking with the coaches, they both mentioned before the game that little things like face-offs would be very important. And Swift Current was concerned because their face-off men uh, at times can be inconsistent. Today they've done a nice job on face-offs, and Marcel is pondering some things right there, and I'm sure that uh, he knows that this face-off's important. You're on a power play. If you win the draw, right away you've got a, probably 30 seconds more of an advantage in terms of having to put in the offensive zone. Well, he's made a change at center for the face-off. Dave and Scott Sissons, number 19, moved out there. There's a shot right off, and Kruger makes the save. Marcel knows his personnel well because Scott's a good face-off man. He mentioned that before the game to both of us, Bernie, and that was a good face-off win by, by Scott Sissons, and the puck goes back to the point. But the shot can go through traffic. Anything can happen. The players here attempting to get their name on the coveted Memorial Cup to join the likes of the 1960 St. Catharines. Roger Crozier and Vic Hadfield among the names on that 1960 Memorial Cup champion team from St. Catharines, Ontario. 11.15 remaining in the third period. 1.30 remaining in the penalty to Dan Lambert. The Blades on the power play setting up Bauer straight up the middle. Has Coacher on the right side. Bauer got to the line, was hooked. There's a shot, the rebound is just sailed wide as Kocher got the rebound in front from close range. Now it's lifted by Sackick down the ice into the Saskatoon zone and backboard is Ken Sutton. Sutton number three. 6'1", 190 pounds. He's played outstanding in the Memorial Cup, has the puck again. Up over the line, gets a pass. Here's a chance to tell the cop he's nailed to the ice. Whole line trying to set something up, and it's cleared to center. Kaminsky gets it ahead to whole line. He's knocked to the ice. Number 21 is Darren Kruger. Bumped by Kaminsky. Shot. Knocked down in front by the defense. 30 seconds remaining in the penalty to Lambert. A shot. That's blocked and taken by Daniels and shoots it into the Saskatoon zone. That was interesting, Bernie. We had Darren Kruger block a shot for his brother who's in goal, and uh, the Kruger blocked a shot for Kruger. The twins, members of the Swift Current Broncos, Trevor Kruger and Darren Kruger in behind the net. This is Kevin Knopp trying to come up with it. Three seconds remaining in the penalty. They jam it in front. And Swift Current, Sheldon Kennedy trying to get it out. Now, here's a two-on-one break. The puck is brought out by Lambert. Lambert going in with Daniels, trying to jam it, and that stops. A two-on-one, and the Blades nullify that scoring opportunity by Swift Current. So we remain tied at three with 9.25 remaining in regulation time. Here's the two-on-one, Lambert comes in. His angle's not very good, but now he takes the puck in improved angle, but he goes to his backhand. It doesn't give him much of an angle. Greenway stays up for a little while, then goes down and blocks that shot. The, the defense and the goaltender worked very well to play that two-on-one. So Lambert breaking in with Daniels, and Saskatoon stops Rick Curran on that scoring attempt. Here comes Bauer. He drills the puck in, and it's handled by goaltender Trevor Kruger. He's bumped and knocked to the ice. Jason Smart trying to come up with it. Here's Swift Current now. Moving in with Trevor Sim. With McFarland. And Peter Soberlock digs into the corner after him. Here's Soberlock trying to get up to Kazowski in front. And Jason Smart has it for Saskatoon. Smart backhands it out to center. It's trapped there by Darren Kruger. Gets it ahead to Sim. Sim in with Kazowski looking for a pass. Loose puck. Here's Soberlock. He can't get a shot. 
down the plate, bring it out again. This is Bader. Bader moving in, rolls the puck, and it bounces off goaltender Kruger into the corner. Trevor Sim gets it ahead now to Sobolak. Long shot, loved by goaltender Mike Greenlay, and he drops it to the side of the net. 8.24 remaining in the third period. We're tied at three. Offside is Lambert. Bernie, what an unbelievable display of hockey. We're seeing one of the best Memorial Cups I've ever seen. I've seen lots of them live and lots on television. And this is an excellent hockey game. Both these teams are opening up a little bit here, giving us some good chances at both ends. And in terms of entertainment, this has been an unbelievable game. And an unbelievable tournament. Our salute to the organizers here in Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan Place and the Saskatoon Blades. Great hosts. Daryl Lubinicki, the general manager, Dennis Bayak, the assistant general manager, and the whole Saskatoon Blade organization in the Western Hockey League. Great host, the 89 Memorial Cup Championship. Bernie, we're down to the last eight minutes of this game now, and it'll be interesting to see whether that, that game last night against Swift, uh, the Swift Current played will be a factor in terms of fatigue because they have to come back and play a game now uh, less than 24 hours later, and it's been a very good pace to this game. Kevin Knopf in his own zone, and the puck goes out to center. Sutton slaps it right back in. In behind the swift current net. Now they're setting up a 3-3 three -three tie in the third period. Kennedy gets a pass over here. Daniels moving in, a chance for Knox. He gets a shot, and it's blocked by the defense. Still digging after it. This is Lambert. Lambert, number three, dumps it to Knox, trying to get it in front. It's intercepted by Sutton. Off the boards and down the ice. Goaltender Kruger comes out. Icing is waved off as, he's, as he touches the puck. Now it's cleared to an open wing. Moving over is Daniels. Setting up now. Number 19 for Swift Current. Look at Daniels dance. Moving in. Trying to split by defenseman Sutton. And he's taken out of the play. Seven minutes remaining. The puck is stolen by Sackick. But he couldn't maintain possession. This is Sutton. Off the boards again and into the swift current zone. It'll be icing as it's touched by Kruger. And the faceoff will come deep in the Saskatoon zone. We'll be back at Saskatchewan Place in a moment. There's the statistical story at Saskatchewan Place. And Dave, are the coaches concerned about overtime? Or is that something that's still some seven minutes away? And they're worried about third period. I think it's a little too early to be concerned about it yet. I think you get down to the two minute mark, you start really thinking about the OT. Right now you're thinking about just the next goal or not giving up something easy here. And here at Saskatoon's Corey Coaster moving in. Coaster dropped it in front. Backhander by Sutton hit a stick and just sails wide and it goes over to Bob Wilkie. Wilkie of Swift Current ahead to Brian Sackett. Up on the right side. This is Tim Tisdale taken out of the play. And the puck is underneath the Saskatoon player, Snezzer. Bernie, before the game, I had a chance to talk to Lauren Fry, who's the assistant general manager of the Swift Current Broncos, and really deserves a lot of credit for helping to build this team, and along with Graham James. They've got eight midget players in the roster tonight playing, and uh, when you see a player like Jimmy Daniels, who's only 16 years old, control the game like he has, I mean, Graham James has got to be very pleased that he's got a good club, but the future also looks good. Two years ago, the team was devastated by that tragic bus crash, which killed four players. Swift Current has rebounded from the emotional depths of that tragedy to become the number one ranked team in all of Canada. An exciting Memorial Cup championship, 3-3 in the third period as Lambert shoots it in. Power, number 10 for Saskatoon. Third round pick of the Edmonton Oilers trying to get it out. Now Darwin McPherson, native of Flintflon, Manitoba, number 27 is stopped. Bauer will try to get something going here. Bauer trying to feed a pass to Dean Holine off his stick, and it comes to Trevor Sim. Sim. To Soberlack. He in turn tried to get it to Peter Kozowski in that field, and here goes Darwin McPherson deep in his own zone for Saskatoon. Bernie, I'm sure both coaches on the bench are probably reminding their players that late in the game, things like no high turnovers, and the fourth check to the third man high, no block shots, things like that late in the game are very, very important. Now here's a chance for Peter Soberlack setting up the shot. It's blocked by defenseman Darwin McPherson, who's playing with a bad ankle. He hasn't practiced for the last couple of days. 
Darren McPherson stopped the shot earlier in the tournament, but he's out there playing a stellar game today. Moving in now, here's a chance. Christie, he's hauled down and taken out of the play. Kevin Kanaf fires it off the boards to Kennedy. Here comes Kennedy, moving up with Daniels, who's heading for the front of the net. Loose puck, and nobody there to pick it up. Wilkie keeps possession. Right in front to Daniels, and it sails wide. Another opportunity there as Kennedy goes after the puck. In front, spinning around is Kyle Reeves, number 17. Reeves sends it through the crease, and it comes out to the blue line where it's off the glass as Christie cleared it up, but brought back in. A shot by Wilkie is stopped by goaltender Mike Greenlay. 4.30 remaining in the third period. Saskatoon under a little pressure in their own zone, and Garrett gets it to center ice. It's fired right back in. Bauer in front of his own goal. The two teams at full strength. That shot in by Brian Garrett. Right to goaltender Trevor Kruger. On the left side, Brian second. Sackett drops it there for Daniels, shoots it into the Saskatoon zone. After it goes Mark McFarland. Bauer behind his own goal for the Saskatoon Blades. Four minutes remain in the third period. We're tied at three. Reaching for it is Kaminsky and just failed to maintain possession. So we both these teams have to be very careful that they don't get guilty of the long shift. This has been a long game, a very good pace here. And it looks like both the teams are still staying out long on their shifts, and that's something that the coach always worries about. Now here's a chance for Saskatoon to tell the cop, and he was stopped as Kevin Kanoff knocked the puck off his stick. Outside the line, the Broncos trying to get it. Kevin Kanoff, he was stopped. Here's Ooh, and almost a two-on-one. It's a delayed offside as Sissons has the puck all tied up, putting his teammate on left wing offside at the blue line. Both coaches now have got to make sure that they keep the players on the short ship, as I mentioned earlier, and they got to make sure they don't give away that numerical advantage. It's the Blades especially, I think, against the line of Daniels and uh, Kennedy. I've got to make sure on the rush they're doing the job against this line, because this line for Swift Current has been very, very effective. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, a population of 180,000. The city offering world-class hospitality, and they've certainly done that this week during the Memorial Cup Championship. Record crowds for the Canadian Major Junior Championship. A shot by Smart. Great scoring chance there for Jason Smart, number 20. Loose puck at the side, deflected as Smart was right in front of Cougar again. Three minutes in the third period. We're tied at three, a shot deflected off the stick, high into the crowd. Well, this has been a real good game, and the teams have played at high intensity. We've got to make sure now the emotions don't run too high because they've done a very good job today. Played very disciplined hockey, both teams. And you don't want to go with a situation where somebody takes a bad penalty and hurts their team, so they've got to make sure they have lots of poise now. The referee, Loris, has been around. He's an experienced referee. I'm sure he'll make sure the players get a break here. Numerous NHL scouts and general managers and player agents here all week at the Memorial Cup Championships and also the NHL official, John D'Amico of the NHL staff is here scouting the officials. And of course, it's a big opportunity for them as well in terms of their hockey future. There's been some good officiating here this week. This shift right here is a very important one because you've got Knox, Daniels, and Kennedy out. And this is the line who's had a lot of good success today. It'll be an important shift for Saskatoon here with only two and a half minutes left in the period to do a job to get this line on this ship. Here comes Christie as he took the pass from Darren McPherson. Gets it up to Garrett. Garrett is taken out of the play nicely by Bob Wilkie. In behind the net is Christie trying to jam it in front. Here's a chance, a shot by Garrett. And that hits someone in front and sails into the corner. It's Kruger behind his own goal. Slaps it ahead to Blake Knox. Knox now gets it ahead. Here's Daniels moving in. Daniels to Kennedy, a shot. Oh, and Greenlay robs him. That's been the story of this game. Mike Greenlay and Trevor Kruger, the goaltending has been exceptional. Well, that's a big save. Down. That's a big save by Greenlay. Once again, off the rush. This line creates a lot. And Sheldon Kennedy's way behind the play, but he skates hard off the puck to join the attack. Kirby uh, Daniels just feeds it off to him, and it's a great play by Kennedy and a great save by Greenlight. Look at him, he's right in here. It's the goalie and the shooter. He's 
excellent job by Greenlay just holding his ground. He went down early, but he had the net well protected. Again, that line for Swift Current, that's an excellent line. Well, in the history of the Memorial Cup, Ontario teams have won it 40 times. Manitoba teams 12, Alberta, Quebec, and Saskatchewan five. And a Saskatchewan team will win it for the sixth time with Saskatoon and Swift Current battling here. Less than two minutes to go. In regulation time, we're tied at three. This is number 13 for Swift Current, Tim Tisdale back. A shot by Lambert, loose puck in front. And goaltender Greenlay makes the save. And back come the blades, Kosher. He's moving in with Kitalnikov, trying to get in front of the net. Taken out of the play by defenseman Kevin Kanak. Digging after it. Is Kosher behind the net, right in front of shot. Oh, what a save by goaltender Kruger. Pretty an unbelievable save. Once again, Kosher is so strong on the puck behind the icing line. The checker can't take him off the puck. And if you watch the save, it's unbelievable. This could be the play of the game. Kosher, great job, puck protection. There's the shot. Kruger's right up on his feet, makes an unbelievable save, and Marcel just cannot believe it. This is, this is the toughest part about coaching, is when a goaltender does it to you. That's unbelievable. What a great reaction shot of Saskatoon coach Marcel Como and Dave, you know all about that. Well, I'll tell you, it's, uh, that's tough to take. Coaster deserves a lot of credit for a great job behind the icing line, and you got to give Trevor Kruger equal credit. What a save. Amazing. Are we heading to overtime? One minute and 20 seconds remaining in the third period. It's a 3-3 tie. The 1989 Memorial Cup Championship, and what a game this has been. An exciting finale to Canadian Major Junior Hockey. And Ed Chenault, David Branch, Jill Porto have to be very impressed with the exhibition here this week of their teams from the respective leagues. Into the corner now goes Kruger. The final minute of regulation time. It comes to Knox. Knox third at the center. It's backhanded in by Brian Garrett. Now the puck. It goes ahead to Knox. Knox a pass up the middle. Here's a chance now for Daniels moving in. He's taken out of the play by Sutton. Loose puck. Greenlay reaches high in the air. 37 seconds remain. Bernie, it would almost seem fitting that this game should go into overtime. The fans this week have been great. They deserve to see a little overtime. And these two teams have played excellent. This has been a great game, and I think we may see some overtime. Although now we're down to a face-off, which are always important in the last half minute of the play. The Blades traditionally have been a little bit stronger on face-offs than Swift Current. This is a very important face-off right here, Bernie. There have been some outstanding plays. The Lon Jean Wittenauer play of the game. Well, it'll probably be the overtime winner. If it goes into overtime, it's a 3-3 tie with 37 seconds remaining. A face-off in the Saskatoon zone to the right of goaltender Mike Greenlay. Number 13 for Swift Current, that's Tisdale. He underwent a spinal fusion last year. It was two months in bed. He said he just watched soaps and movies, was anxious to get back, and he's been a key member of the Swift Current Broncos this year. The puck is kept in. Here's a chance in front. Ooh, and that just... Sailed wide of goaltender Greenlay, who I think misplayed it somewhat. Sutton fires it off the glass up to Kosher. Kosher moving in, heading for the front of the net as Sissons looking for the pass, and it's off a stick. Sissons with 12 seconds remaining, and it's cleared down the ice. And going back for it is Ken Sutton. Five seconds remain in the third period. It's shot down the ice. We're going to overtime. 3-3. After regulation time, and Dave King, as you mentioned, what a finale it'll be. It's been record crowds, record hockey entertainment all week, and it'll be decided in overtime. I think it's just a fantastic finish. I think it's a real credit to both these teams to battle through 60 minutes to go into overtime. Both goalkeepers have played so well. It's been a game that's been, I think when the coaches look at the videotape tomorrow, they're going to be a little concerned about the way they played when it was 3-3 in the last five minutes. No one really was playing very defensively, but it's exciting and it's a good hockey. And I think this is going to really sell some tickets and young kids watching hockey today, you can see that major junior hockey certainly produces some good players and it's games like this. And a look now at the summary 
of the hockey game up to this point and uh, boy it's been an entertaining contest here at Saskatchewan place in Saskatoon it was Kennedy opening the scoring in the opening period Kennedy from Danny Lambert and then in the second period it was Knox Blake Knox and then Saskatoon striking back it was Scott Sissons and then Katelnikov Tracy getting a big goal there and then Kosher unassisted late in the second period at 1943 and Saskatoon leading by one goal but Daniels responds in the third period from Kennedy to tie it up entertainment and this is an exciting Memorial Cup championship and with more thoughts Here's our host, Kevin Walsh. Well, Bernie, the reason we're into overtime is because of this gentleman, Kimby Daniels. And Kimby, a big goal in the third period. Uh, you and Sheldon Kennedy worked to give and go very well at the blue line. Yeah, you know, we were told to drive to the net a little more in our three-on-twos. We're getting quite a few uh, three-on-two opportunities, and we're really not uh, creating any uh, scoring chances on them. So, you know, we're trying to get the inside guy to drive to the net, and, you know, that's hopefully pull one of the defensemen, you know, in with them, and that'll leave a guy in the slot open. And, you know, it worked pretty good, and, uh, you know, Sheldon fed me a nice pass, and I was fortunate to get it by Greenlee. Boy, well, Sheldon's been a big spirit lifter here for this Bronco Hockey Club. Yeah, he has. You know, he's our leader, uh, you know, not only in uh, point production and stuff, but in inspiration. You know, this is his third year in the league, and, you know, he's been through a lot of playoffs and stuff, you know, growing up, and, you know, in Winnipeg when he played tier two, and he knows what it's like. And I think, uh, you know, when you have a guy like him to lead the team, him and Danny, you know, it makes it really easier for the young guys. Kemby, maybe you can talk about the goal. It was your fifth goal of the tournament, probably the most important because it tied the hockey game. Here it is. Describe. Well, you know, I just went inside the defenseman, and Sheldon fed me a nice pass, and, you know, I saw the top hand in the net open, and I just shot it in there, and I beat Greenlay. I was very lucky to get it up over his shoulder. Here's another look from a different angle. Uh, Greenlay's played so well, you must have saw an opening, though. Yeah, I did. You know, he's played uh, extremely well throughout uh, this uh, Memorial Cup, and, you know, I just looked up, and I saw, you know, the up of the top of the net open, and I just fired it and tried to get up there as much as I could. I don't know if a lot of hockey fans know this, but Kimby is only 16 years old. You had, what, 30-plus goals with the Broncos in his very first year. I mean, the future is so bright for you. Well, it's been easy to play in Swift Current. You know, I've uh, learned a lot in my first year from Graham and, you know, a lot of the older players. And I think, you know, the, the season I had is just a reflection of the, you know, the surroundings that I'm in. You know, it's easier to play on a, on a winning team and a solid organization. You know, I've never, you know, I was fortunate to get traded before the season started. You know, I don't think I would have turned out to the player that I am now if I would have played in the organization I was still in. So I'm very fortunate to be traded. I think what's happened, Kimby, is you got into Swift Current at the right time because you had so many players to look up to. You know, the Sheldon Kennedys, the Tim Tisdales, they were all there. And what a leadership role they have taken on you. Yeah, they have. You know, it's easy. You don't play very much, you know, but it's just, as uh, you know, fun to sit and watch them when you're, you know, they're so great on the ice. And, you know, if you're not playing, you know, you still learn as much just watching them. When you get the ice time, you just try and, uh, you know, do what they do. And, you know, it's really a, it's really easy, uh, you know, environment to learn in when you play behind such good talent. What about the f uh, fatigue factor now in overtime? You played la last night against Peterborough. What's your thoughts on the overtime? Well, you know, I think we got to come out and just, uh, you know, force them as much as we can and, you know, just play our game. And, you know, hopefully we'll catch them on a break you know hopefully we'll be able to score the goal i don't think we'll be uh you know we may be tired and stuff but i think in a game like this you can you can play in a motion and in an overtime like this kimby thank you very much good you're luck welcome. in overtime okay thanks you're welcome kimby daniels it should be noted he's only 16 his draft year is next year many project him very high in the first round next year in the nhl draft the coach of the year in canada ron kennedy representing the western hockey league from the medicine hat tigers and Danny Dubay from the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. Danny from trois Rivier, And the winner, Joe McNamell of the Kitchener Rangers of the Ontario Hockey League. Only his third year coaching in the OHL. He's only 28 years old. The youngest coach and general manager in hockey, Joe McNamell, the coach of the year in Canadian hockey. We're in overtime. The Saskatoon Blades and the Swift Current Broncos were tied 3-3. With us now, Rob DeMaio, formerly of the, of the Medicine Hat Tigers. Rob was in the 1987 and 1988 Memorial Cup Championship. And uh, just bring us your thoughts on what you've seen so far in 60 minutes. Well, tonight's been a great game. It's, uh, you know, end to end pretty exciting. There's some, uh, some real talented players on both teams. And, uh, you know, if tournaments were like this every year, you know, it'd, it'd be very successful. It's, uh, I think Saskatoon did a great job. What would be going on in the dressing room right now? Swift Current played last night, in, you know, and beat Peterborough 6-2. to two. The fatigue factor could be a factor here in the overtime. Well, sure. They played a lot of hockey, but, uh, you know, there's so much emotion going on right now. You're playing for a national championship, and, you know, you gotta, you got to put those little aches and pains aside, and you just got to play. And, uh, you know, I, I was in it the last, uh, the, the past two years, and, you know, I think even when you're tired, you, something out comes out 
that you know an inner feeling that you know you want to you want to play and you want to play hard and uh, and I think that uh, both teams are going to come out in the overtime it should be pretty exciting. Rob is there a fear factor involved right now don't make that mistake don't make the game man. Well sure definitely you know you don't want to be the goat that uh, that gives a puck away and they score it's uh, you know it's it's going to be a defensive struggle and you know it might be a little bit raggedy I guess what you do in overtime is get the puck out or and you don't take any chances everything's simple and uh, and uh, most championship teams win that way how's the feeling winning two back-to-back -back memorial cup champions oh it's super it's uh something you only dream about and, you know i uh, had a great time in junior hockey and uh you know it did did you know it helped me out to, to where i am today and uh you know i really enjoyed it uh, it's it's a it's a great great league great leagues around canada and uh you know exposure is great and it's just super time. Rob, thanks very much. Should be a heck of an overtime. Yeah, thank you very much. Rob DeMaio, formerly of the Medicine Hat Tigers. He played in the 1987 and 88 Memorial Cup Championship. We're in overtime. Swift Current and the Blades are tied 3-3. The last time the Memorial Cup was held in Saskatchewan was in 1980. It was held in Regina. The final featured Peterborough and the Cornwall Royals. And that ended in overtime, too, with this rush by Robert Savard end-to-end -end as he gives Cornwall the victory over Peterborough by a score of 3-2. to two. What a great move by Savard as Cornwall won the Memorial Cup on that overtime goal, 3-2, over Peterborough. Overtime in 1980 at the Regina Agrodome. And what a happy bunch back there in 1980, the Cornwall Royals winning at the Regina Agrodome. It was overtime then. We're back in Saskatchewan, and we're overtime. 3-3, three, three, Swift Current and the Blades. With more, here's Bernie Pascal. Thank you, Kevin. I remember that uh, great goal in overtime, and we're going to have an exciting play here in the next few minutes at Saskatchewan Place and Dave King. You know, you look at uh, enthusiasm and entertainment, junior hockey style, not exemplified any better than what we've witnessed here, not only in this game, but all week in the Memorial Cup. Oh, it's been a great week with exciting hockey, and I think the fans have been treated to some really spectacular play by all the teams in this tournament. And as we mentioned earlier on the telecast, it's a great commercial for major junior hockey. We've mentioned several times throughout the telecast the outstanding goaltending by Greenlay and Kruger. And, uh, you know, there's been many uh, outstanding moments and some close calls around the net, but Kruger has made one uh, big save on this play. Yeah, Kruger's played very well. The defenseman walks in with a great shot here, and Kruger... He's down, but he makes the save off his chest, and he's made a lot of saves just like that throughout the course of the, the week, and both Greenlay and Kruger have played very, very well. The goaltenders are getting great support, too, from uh, the players coming back, and especially the defense, Dave, as you mentioned. They're blocking shots, and uh, they're not really screening. They're really uh, helping the goaltenders in every aspect. Well, the defensemen, I think, have done a lot of a lot of uh, good efforts to block shots, and the only one that's kind of backfired was the goal by Daniels, where the defensive went down, and they went under his leg and kind of screened uh, the goaltender Greenlay, but they played very well, and now in overtime, the both teams have got to play a smart game, yet, you know, you don't want to see them lose that positive emotion they've got and all the energy they've got cooped up here. Well, the two coaches, Dave, before the game, Marcel Como and uh, Graham James, uh, were very uptight, uh, but uh, very confident. What do they do now in overtime to settle down the young players? Well, you know, it comes down now to a, the first goal. It's all over. And so both these teams have got to play. I think Swift Current has to play the same game. And their game is to attack, attack, attack. They can't change their game. If they change their game, they'll have a problem. Saskatoon is a bit more of a patient team. And they've got to take that approach where they're patient. They make sure they uh, grind it out a little bit. Maybe get their chance off the forecheck versus the rush. Fans back in Swift Current will remember this player, an outstanding member of the Swift Current Broncos, now a member of the Quebec Nordiques. Joe Sackick is standing by with Kevin. Well, Bernie, unbelievable, but Joe Sackick could be playing in this hockey game. He's an underage. He was drafted in 1987 by the Quebec Nordiques, 15th overall, and he's playing in the National Hockey League at the age of 19. But really, Joe, your heart has to be here with the Broncos. I mean, if Quebec doesn't bring you up, you'd be in the Memorial Cup. Oh, definitely. You know, uh, I was with Swift Current for the last two years, and, you know, my heart's with them, and I, I just hope they can pull it off here. They had a tremendous year. Uh, you know, they were, I don't know, first overall in Canada, so hopefully they can uh, pull it off right here. I know you've been kicking around Saskatoon for the last number of days. Uh, what's the thought on the Broncos? They came in here. I think the media built them up to be uh, unbeatable. They lost that Wednesday game in the round robin to the Blades. Just what are the players thinking right now? Um, I'm not sure what they're thinking right now. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that they're nervous. You know, I am. And uh, 
they had a tremendous year, like like I said before, and uh, they didn't play that well in the Memorial Cup, but uh, you know they just have to come up with one big beer and score a goal, and that's it. You had a great start with the Quebec Nordiques. Unfortunately, the injury kind of slowed you up. Oh yeah, I did have a good start. You know, uh, Ronald Point played me a lot, and I played with a lot of confidence, and you know that just helped me out a lot. And when I got hurt, I lost a little bit of confidence, and you know things went bad from there. Joe, really an oddity because Curtis Lechician, a defenseman with Quebec, also an underage. He was with the Saskatoon Blades. Both of you, instead of Quebec last year, could be playing right now in the Memorial Cup. Yeah, definitely. You know, it would be nice, but you know, I'm pretty sure both of us are are happy we're up in Quebec. Uh, it was a great experience for me. Ne nevertheless, we uh, lost a lot. And Joe, your thoughts on overtime? What's going to happen? Uh, well, I certainly hope Swift Current's going to uh, win the hockey game, and I have to predict my brother's going to score the winning goal. <laughs> Why not? Thank you very much, Joe. It should be uh, just a great offseason for you. I know you're willing to get back at it for 1989-90. Thank you very much. Okay. Joe Sackick of the Quebec Nordiques. What a hockey game. We're in overtime. The Blades and Swift Current are tied 3-3. This is Saskatchewan Place in Saskatoon, the venue for the 1989 Memorial Cup Championship, and we're heading into overtime to decide the 1989 winner. The Swift Current Broncos in Saskatoon, Swift Current tying it up in the third period on this play, Dave. This is a great play by Daniels here, a quick snapshot on the short side on Greenlee. Uh, he drove the middle lane really well, a puck got across to him, and that goal put it into overtime, and we're headed for a very exciting overtime here. I think both teams are going to be energized. It'll be interesting to see how these teams start off for whether they start off kind of tentatively or do they really get at it right away. So far, the way this game has gone, it's just going to go for it, I think. Saskatoon Blades attracted some 230,000 fans this season to Saskatchewan Place, and we have record crowds all this week at the Memorial Cup Championship. Bernie, both these organizations deserve a lot of credit, not just the coaches, but the scouts and the general managers for really putting together two very excellent teams that have got lots of talent. Both organizations, Saskatoon Swift Current, have really done a nice job. I know that uh, Daryl Lubinicki with Saskatoon has put a lot of years into this franchise, and certainly now it's all paying off with a great performance here in the Memorial Cup Final. And a salute to the other two Memorial Cup contenders, Laval Titans, champions of the Quebec League, coached by Paul and Bordelo, and the Peterborough Peets, coached by Dick Todd, who lost last night to Swift Current in the semifinal. So the overtime is underway. The two teams at full strength. The puck is shot into Mike Greenlay. Colin Bauer, number 10, setting up for the Saskatoon Blades. Bauer slaps it off the boards to Scott Sissons. He can't handle it, but here's a chance for Garrett. A shot, and Cougar makes the first big save in overtime. This is not the way to start out overtime, to give up what looked like for a moment a two-on-one. Your goaltender Kruger is still forced to make a big save, and what he basically does, he stays on his feet and cuts the angle off and just made a great save. But boy, Swift Kurt's lucky because it's very close to a two-on-one. A forward gets back to the top of the screen, knocks, but we've got a two-on-one situation. And those are the kind of plays, those little turnovers burning sometimes that are a long way from your net. It really backfires. The names of the players will go on the coveted Memorial Cup Championship, the team that wins here in overtime. They'll join the likes of Andy Bathgate, Dean Prentice, Harry Howell from the 1952 12th team, the champions of the Ontario League. Here's a loose puck in front, and it's taken out by Saskatoon's Bauer. Bauer just shoots it into the swift current zone. Goaltender Trevor Kruger plays it there. Brian Garrett stops it, but the Broncos have possession. It comes over now to Sheldon Kennedy. Kennedy drops it, trying to get it in front to Tim Tisdale. That was broken up. Kruger a shot deflected off the stick of Tisdale into the corner. After it goes Jason Christie of Saskatoon. Christie, number 21, bumped by Kimby Daniels. Lead pass, it goes off the stick there of Swift Currents Tisdale and slides into the Saskatoon end. Sutton Gets the pass up to center ice. That's broken up. Cleared off the glass, taken by Jody Prasnick of the Saskatoon Blades. And Dan Lambert behind his own goal for Swift Current. Clears it on the right side. Number 14, Sim. Up the middle to Kozowski. It's broken up at the line, a delayed offside. Darwin McPherson. He clears it out for Saskatoon. Now the Swift Current Broncos. 
Coming up, number 14 is Trevor Sims. Stops at the line. Here's a chance now. Coaster moving in a shot. Off goaltender Kruger and just bounced wide. Peter Kozowski, for swift turn. Gets it ahead. This is Kevin Kanoff. Kanoff got to the line and stopped. Saskatoon, Yellow Wagon, moving in with Kosher right in front of shot. And that's stopped by Kruger as Curry Kosher had a good scoring opportunity. Now the Broncos, Trevor Sim. Sim, number 14. Kanoff hitting for the front of the net and that's broken up. Colin Bauer tried to slap it, and he has possession inside his own line. Sometimes you live and die by the sword. Swift current. They like to attack and really go for it, but they get three people trapped deep far too often here, and the Blades have really counterattacked well off those turnovers, and it's been a wide open overtime so far. It looks like it's going to be a goal that can be scored off one of those big plays. There's Bader trying to get it in front to whole line, and he just failed to control the bouncing puck. Off the boards, it goes to center ice. This is Tisdale, a shot, and that was wide. After it goes Sutton, and he lifts the puck out to center ice. We're in overtime, we've played three minutes. That shot goes wide, Tisdale slaps it off the board. Tisdale trying to get it to second. Here's Tisdale throwing it in front. It comes back to Wilkie. Wilkie, number 24, watched by whole line. He's setting up, here's Wilkie, moving right in, and he can't get a shot. Wilkie still has possession. Gets it back to the point. A drive by Kruger is blocked. Kruger and it scores! <laughs> the Swift Current Broncos have won the 1989 Memorial Cup. Saskatoon Netminder played a stellar game. A disappointed Saskatoon Blade team. They can hold their heads high, though. An outstanding season. An outstanding Memorial Cup championship. The moment now, though, belongs to the Swift Current Broncos. A very tough loss for Mar uh, Marcel Como and the Saskatoon Blades. They just played a great hockey game. The winning goal, the winning goal just shows the poise that the Swift Current Broncos have got. There was a couple of opportunities. They might have shot and got a block shot, but they hung on to the puck. Were very patient, very poised in the offensive zone, and they uh, really got the Blades in trouble with coverage and an excellent goal. Wilkie here fakes a couple of shots, and he almost walks in right here, but doesn't get a chance. The puck goes back up to the top of the zone again. And again, we see some good poise from up top. It goes to the point. He fakes the shot, holds the puck, and now he just makes a little play in front. Tisdale gets a stick on it, deflects it in. An excellent play by Swift Curd. Great poise. I mean, they're, a, they're an offensive team, and you can sure see why uh, they play so well. They've got a long panic point, a lot of these players. They don't throw it away. They didn't get any block shots right there. And there's jubilation. Boy, does that ever feel good when you win a game in overtime. And for that team, they've got to be very satisfied after coming back off a tremendous tragedy three years ago to win the Memorial Cup. It certainly must be a great feeling for this team and all their fans in Swift Current Saskatchewan. A 12th round draft pick of the Edmonton Oilers, Tim Tisdale, gets the winning goal in overtime for the Swift Current Broncos under coach Graham James, assistant coach Lauren Fry, they win the 1989 Memorial Cup Championship. Just an exciting afternoon of Canadian Major Junior Hockey here in Saskatoon. And now let's pick up the presentation to be joined the public address announcer, Ryan Posniak. No president of the Canadian and Western Hockey League. And Mr. Murray Costello, president of the Canadian Amateur Hockey Association, and Mr. Keith Elms, representing Toshiba Canada Limited. Mr. John Winter and Mr. Marv Hall will now present the Memorial Cup to Swift Current Bronco number 12, Sheldon Kennedy, captain of the Memorial Cup champion Swift Current Broncos. Mr. Ed 
Mitch and Elf will now present the Stafford Smythe Most Valuable Player Trophy to the most valuable player of the 1989 Memorial Cup. The winner is Swift Current Broncos number three, Dan Lambert. Mr. Keith Elms of Toshiba Maxilly will now present the Toshiba Color Television to Dan Lambert, the Swift Current Broncos, who was voted the most valuable player of the 89 Memorial Cup. <laughs> Mr. Murray Costello will now present the George Parsons Trophy to the most sportsmanlike player of the 1989 Memorial Cup. The winner is Jamie Hicks of the Peterborough Peets, who best exemplified the highest form of sportsmanship and also receives a Longy Wittenauer wristwatch. Compliments a Longy Wittenauer. Well, the award presentations continue, and the most valuable player, of course, also receives the Toshiba Television. That's awarded to the most valuable player in the Memorial Cup competition. and Mr. Costello will now present the Molson Cooper Gold, Silver, and Bronze Medallions Group Sports Bag Compliments of Fabergé to the three stars of today's game. The third star from the Swift Current Broncos, number three, Dan Lambert, who receives a Molson Cooper Bronze Medal plus a Group Sports Bag Compliments of Fabergé from Mr. Murray Costello. The second star from the Saskatoon Blades, number one, Mike Greenland. Well, goaltender Mike Greenland, 20 years of age. The goaltender for the Saskatoon Blades. Great game this afternoon. Disappointing loss. And the first star. What a great from the season. Swift Current Broncos, number 13, Tim well, Tisdale. He receives a Molson Cooper gold medal plus a group sports bag compliments. Fabergé from Mr. John Winter. Timmy Tisdale gets the game-winning goal, and what a story there. Had a spinal fusion last year. Response to get 57 goals Mr. this Mitchell. season. We'll be back with more of the 1989 Memorial Cup Championship from Saskatchewan Place. Tim Tisdale. Well, the all-star team being announced, Mike Greenlay of Saskatoon, the goaltender, the defenseman, Dan Lambert, Ken Sutton, defense, the center, the Tim Marco, Tisdale, Dan left Lambert. wing, Neil Carnes of Laval, Quebec, and the right wing on the all-star team, Sheldon Kennedy of Swift Current. The most valuable player, the Stafford Smythe Memorial Trophy to also Dan Lambert, the most gentlemanly player, Jamie Hicks of Peterborough, and the outstanding goaltender, Mike Greenlay of Saskatoon. But there is Ken Sutton, one of the defensemen named to the Memorial Cup All-Star team. There's the goaltender, Mike Greenlay of Saskatoon. He makes the All-Star team at the 89 Memorial Cup Championship. Supporting the sponsorship of the 1989 Memorial Cup. So an exciting time here in Saskatoon. Record crowds, great hockey, and what a finale it was. The Swift Current Broncos and the Saskatoon Blades. The Western Hockey League represented by 14 teams, and two of the 14 decide the Canadian Major Junior Hockey League Championship here in Saskatchewan Place. And there it is. Memories they will long remember. The Memorial Cup. The Swift Current. The 1989 Memorial Cup. The Canadian Junior Hockey League Championship. Brought to you by Molson Canadians. What beer's all about. Well, the winning goal, the Longine Wittenauer play of the game, and it's scored by Tim Tisdale, number 13. That gives Swift Current Broncos the Memorial Cup championship. The Longine Wittenauer play of the game.
Exciting finale to the 1989 season. The Swift Current Broncos win the Memorial Cup. On behalf of everyone here, Dave King, Kevin Waugh, Paul Graham, David Gregg, Oliver Baberad, this telecast copyright and strictly for the private use of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or rebroadcast in whole or in part without the express written consent of the CTV television network is strictly prohibited. Thank you for viewing. So long from Saskatoon. <laughs>